이번 영상은 원어민 영어회화 팟캐스트 3시간 연속 듣기입니다. 그럼 바로 시작할게요. It's a really common situation sometimes. Mm-hmm. You have an appointment at the doctor's or something. Or at work. And you have to cancel it. Yes, so we're going to learn some great language to help you cancel appointments today. Let's go straight to the dialogue then. We're going to be listening as Samantha and Angela have a phone conversation and Angela is trying to cancel an appointment. And it's going to be a little bit fast in the beginning, but when we come back, we will explain all the great vocabulary. Hi, Samantha. This is Angela calling. Oh, hi, Angela. What's up? I'm just calling about our meeting today. I wonder, is it possible to reschedule our appointment in the afternoon? I have a bit of an emergency that I need to take care of. Let me see. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'm really sorry. I hope it doesn't inconvenience you too much. It's just this thing came up and... Angela, you know what? I can't make it to our meeting either. Why don't we postpone it to tomorrow afternoon at the same time? Sounds great. See you tomorrow. Angela? Angela, look up. See that lady over there who's trying on a red leather jacket? Isn't that Samantha? What? No wonder she told me she couldn't make it to the meeting. Oh no, I think she saw me. Okay, we have some really interesting words that you probably listened to in this dialogue, so mm-hmm. let's start with language takeaway. Language takeaway. Today on language takeaway, we're bringing you three words. Uh, Erica, what's the first one? The first word is reschedule. 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 When you reschedule an appointment, you change it for another day or time. Exactly. Great. The second word that we have is inconvenience. 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 So to inconvenience someone is to... To make things not convenient for that person. (laughs) So to make things a little bit difficult or to make things a little bit... um, Uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Inconvenience. And our third word is... Postpone. 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 We have some examples of the word postpone that will help you to understand its meaning a little bit better. Let's listen. Example one. Since Robert is late again, we have to postpone the meeting. Example two. I'm sorry, Simon, but your vacation has been postponed until next month. Example 3 Unfortunately, the flight will be postponed. Okay, so basically postpone is to delay. That's right. Make it at a later time. At a later time. Mm-hmm. Okay, some great words there, and uh, we can listen to our dialogue a second time at a slower speed. Hello, Samantha speaking. Hi, Samantha. This is Angela calling. Oh, hi, Angela. What's up? I'm just calling about our meeting today. I wonder, is it possible to reschedule our appointment in the afternoon? I have a bit of an emergency that I need to take care of. Let me see. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'm really sorry. I hope it doesn't inconvenience you too much. It's just this thing came up and... Angela, you know what? I can't make it to our meeting either. Why don't we postpone it to tomorrow afternoon at the same time? Sounds great. See you tomorrow. Angela, Angela, look up. See that lady over there who's trying on a red leather jacket? Isn't that Samantha? What? No wonder she told me she couldn't make it to the meeting. Oh no! I think she saw me. Alright, so in this dialogue we had some really great phrases that we should look at in Fluency Builder. Fluency Builder We have three phrases for you today in Fluency Builder and the first one is so common, it's a great phrase. What's up? 
What's up? What's up? <laughs> so this is a very common way of saying hi. Yeah. What's up? How's it going? What's going on? Right. And now the interesting thing is that many people don't know how to answer this phrase. Yes, I see this all the time with my students. So if you say what's up, you should say not much, not much, nothing, nothing. So what's up? Not much. Not much. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the next time someone tells you what's up, now you know what to answer. Yeah. Okay. Our second phrase is can't make it. Can't make it. I can't make it. We use this phrase when we want to say I cannot attend. I, I cannot make it. Yeah, I can't come. Right. So, if you're having a party today, I say, "Oh, I'm sorry, I can't make it." Mm -hmm. yeah, it means I can't go. Exactly. Maybe one more example. So, Marco, we've got a meeting today at three o'clock. I can't make it. I'm recording today. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, can't make it. Mm -hmm. Our last word for fluency builder, this thing came up. This thing came up. This thing came up. This is a great way of giving an excuse for why you can't make it. To right. Event. Mm -hmm. So, I can't make it today because this thing came up. Like, something... Something happened. Something happened. Yeah. Let's listen to a few examples of this phrase so we can see how it's used in the wild. Example one. I'm sorry that I'm late. This thing came up at work and I had to stay to take care of it. Example two. I can't talk right now. Something came up. Example three. Sorry I missed the meeting. Something came up. Okay, great example and I guess it's perfectly clear now. Yes. So let's listen to our dialogue a third time, and now we're ready to understand everything. Hello, Samantha speaking. Hi, Samantha. This is Angela calling. Oh, hi, Angela. What's up? I'm just calling about our meeting today. I wonder, is it possible to reschedule our appointment in the afternoon? I have a bit of an emergency that I need to take care of. Let me see. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'm really sorry. I hope it doesn't inconvenience you too much. It's just this thing came up and... Angela, you know what? I can't make it to our meeting either. Why don't we postpone it to tomorrow afternoon at the same time? Sounds great. See you tomorrow. Angela? Angela, look up. See that lady over there who's trying on a red leather jacket? Isn't that Samantha? What? No wonder she told me she couldn't make it to the meeting. Oh no, I think she saw me. So Erica, have you ever canceled an appointment like this uh, under false pretenses? So for for a fake reason? For a fake reason to go shopping? Um, well, I may not have, you know, told my boss, so I can't make it to a meeting because this thing came up and then I really was going shopping. Mm -hmm. I've never done that. It's a really common situation sometimes. Mm -hmm. You have an appointment at the doctor's or something. Or at work. And you have to cancel it. Yes, so we're gonna learn some great language to help you cancel appointments today. Let's go straight to the dialogue then. We're going to be listening as Samantha and Angela have a phone conversation and Angela is trying to cancel an appointment. And it's gonna be a little bit fast in the beginning, but when we come back, we will explain all the great vocabulary. Hi, Samantha. This is Angela calling. Oh, hi, Angela. What's up? I'm just calling about our meeting today. I wonder, is it possible to reschedule our appointment in the afternoon? I have a bit of an emergency that I need to take care of. Let me see. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'm really sorry. I hope it doesn't inconvenience you too much. It's just this thing came up and... Angela, you know what? I can't make it to our meeting either. Why don't we postpone it to tomorrow afternoon at the same time? Sounds great. See you tomorrow. Angela? Angela, look up. See that lady over there who's trying on a red leather jacket? Isn't that Samantha? What? No wonder she told me she couldn't make it to the meeting. Oh no, I think she saw me. Okay, we have some really interesting words that you probably listened to in this dialogue, so mm -hmm. let's start with language takeaway. 
Language takeaway. Today on Language Takeaway, we're bringing you three words.、Uh, Erica, what's the first one? The first word is reschedule. 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 When you reschedule an appointment, you change it for another day or time. Exactly. Great. The second word that we have is inconvenience. 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 So to inconvenience someone is to to make things not convenient for that person. <laughs> right. So to make things a little bit difficult、yeah. or to make things a little bit、um, uncomfortable. Uncomfortable.、Mm-hmm. Inconvenience. And our third word is. Postpone. 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 We have some examples of the word postpone that will help you to understand its meaning a little bit better. Let's listen. Example one. Since Robert is late again, we have to postpone the meeting. Example two. I'm sorry, Simon, but your vacation has been postponed until next month. Example three. Unfortunately, the flight will be postponed. Okay, so basically, postpone is to delay. That's right. Make it at a later time. At a later time.、Mm-hmm. Okay, some great words there, and、uh, we can listen to our dialogue a second time at a slower speed. Hello, Samantha speaking. Hi, Samantha. This is Angela calling. Oh, hi, Angela. What's up? I'm just calling about our meeting today. I wonder, is it possible to reschedule our appointment in the afternoon? I have a bit of an emergency that I need to take care of. Let me see. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'm really sorry. I hope it doesn't inconvenience you too much. It's just this thing came up, and Angela, you know what? I can't make it to our meeting either. Why don't we postpone it to tomorrow afternoon at the same time? Sounds great. See you tomorrow. Angela, Angela, look up. See that lady over there who's trying on a red leather jacket? Isn't that Samantha? What? No wonder she told me she couldn't make it to the meeting. Oh no! I think she saw me. All right. So in this dialogue, we had some really great phrases that we should look at in Fluency Builder. Fluency Builder. We have three phrases for you today in Fluency Builder, and the first one is so common. It's a great phrase. What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> so this is a very common way of saying hi. Yeah. What's up? How's it going? What's going on? Right. And now the interesting thing is that n- many people don't know how to answer this phrase. Yes, I see this all the time with my students. So if you say what's up, you should say not much. Not much. Nothing. Nothing. So what's up? Not much. Not much. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the next time someone tells you what's up, now you know what to answer. Yeah. Okay. Our second phrase is. Can't make it. Can't make it. I can't make it. We use this phrase when we want to say I cannot attend. I, I cannot make it. Yeah, I can't come. Right. So, if you're having a party today, I say, Oh, I'm sorry, I can't make it.、Mm-hmm. Uh, it means I can't go. Exactly. Maybe one more example. So, Marco, we've got a meeting today at three o'clock. I can't make it. I'm recording today. Oh, okay. <laughs> So can't make it.、Mm-hmm. Our last word for fluency builder. This thing came up. This thing came up. This thing came up. This is a great way of giving an excuse for why you can't make it to right. an event. So、mm-hmm. I can't make it today because this thing came up. Like something. Something happened. Something happened. Yeah. Let's listen to a few examples of this phrase so we can see how it's used in the wild. Example one. I'm sorry that I'm late. This thing came up at work, and I had to stay to take care of it. Example two. I can't talk right now. Something came up. Example three. Sorry, I missed the meeting. Something came up. 
Okay, great example, and I guess it's perfectly clear now. Yes. So let's listen to our dialogue a third time, and now we're ready to understand everything. Hello, Samantha speaking. Hi, Samantha. This is Angela calling. Oh, hi, Angela. What's up? I'm just calling about our meeting today. I wonder, is it possible to reschedule our appointment in the afternoon? I have a bit of an emergency that I need to take care of. Let me see. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'm really sorry. I hope it doesn't inconvenience you too much. It's just this thing came up and... Angela, you know what? I can't make it to our meeting either. Why don't we postpone it to tomorrow afternoon at the same time? Sounds great. See you tomorrow. Angela? Angela, look up. See that lady over there who's trying on a red leather jacket? Isn't that Samantha? What? No wonder she told me she couldn't make it to the meeting. Oh no, I think she saw me. So Erica, have you ever canceled an appointment like this uh, under false pretenses? So for for a fake reason? For a fake reason to go shopping? Um, well, I may not have, you know, told my boss, so I can't make it to a meeting because this thing came up and then I really was going shopping. Mm -hmm. I've never done that. That's a really common situation. Sometimes mm -hmm. you have an appointment at the doctor's or something. Or at work. And you have to cancel it. Yes. So we're going to learn some great language to help you cancel appointments today. Let's go straight to the dialogue then. We're going to be listening as Samantha and Angela have a phone conversation and Angela is trying to cancel an appointment. And it's going to be a little bit fast in the beginning, but when we come back, we will explain all the great vocabulary. Hi, Samantha. This is Angela calling. Oh, hi, Angela. What's up? I'm just calling about our meeting today. I wonder, is it possible to reschedule our appointment in the afternoon? I have a bit of an emergency that I need to take care of. Let me see. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'm really sorry. I hope it doesn't inconvenience you too much. It's just this thing came up and... Angela, you know what? I can't make it to our meeting either. Why don't we postpone it to tomorrow afternoon at the same time? Sounds great. See you tomorrow. Angela? Angela, look up. See that lady over there who's trying on a red leather jacket? Isn't that Samantha? What? No wonder she told me she couldn't make it to the meeting. Oh no, I think she saw me. Okay, we have some really interesting words that you probably listened to in this dialogue, so mm -hmm. let's start with language takeaway. Language takeaway. Today on Language Takeaway, we're bringing you three words. Uh, Erica, what's the first one? The first word is reschedule. 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 When you reschedule an appointment, you... Change it for another day or time. Exactly. Great. The second word that we have is inconvenience. 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 So to inconvenience someone is to... To make things not convenient for that person. <laughs> All right. So to make things a little bit difficult yeah. or to make things a little bit... Um, uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Inconvenience. And our third word is... Postpone. 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 We have some examples of the word postpone that will help you to understand its meaning a little bit better. Let's listen. Example one. Since Robert is late again, we have to postpone the meeting. Example two. I'm sorry, Simon, but your vacation has been postponed until next month. Example three. Unfortunately, the flight will be postponed. Okay, so basically postpone is to delay. That's right. Make it at a later time. At a later time. Mm -hmm. Okay, some great words there, and uh, we can listen to our dialogue a second time at a slower speed. Hello, Samantha speaking. 
Hi, Samantha. This is Angela calling. Oh, hi, Angela. What's up? I'm just calling about our meeting today. I wonder, is it possible to reschedule our appointment in the afternoon? I have a bit of an emergency that I need to take care of. Let me see. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'm really sorry. I hope it doesn't inconvenience you too much. It's just this thing came up and. Angela, you know what? I can't make it to our meeting either. Why don't we postpone it to tomorrow afternoon at the same time? Sounds great. See you tomorrow. Angela, Angela, look up. See that lady over there who's trying on a red leather jacket? Isn't that Samantha? What? No wonder she told me she couldn't make it to the meeting. Oh no! I think she saw me. All right, so in this dialogue, we had some really great phrases that we should look at in Fluency Builder. Fluency Builder. We have three phrases for you today in Fluency Builder, and the first one is so common. It's a great phrase. What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> so, this is a very common way of saying hi. Yeah. What's up? How's it going? What's going on? Right. And now, the interesting thing is that n many people don't know how to answer this phrase. Yes, I see this all the time with my students. So, if you say what's up, you should say not much. Not much. Nothing. Nothing. So, what's up? Not much. Not much. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, the next time someone tells you what's up, now you know what to answer. Yeah. Okay, our second phrase is can't make it. Can't make it. I can't make it. We use this phrase when we want to say, I cannot attend. I, I cannot make it. Yeah, I can't come. Right. So if you're having a party today, I say, oh, I'm sorry, I can't make it. Mm -hmm. uh, it means I can't go. Exactly. Maybe one more example. So, Marco, we've got a meeting today at three o'clock. I can't make it. I'm recording today. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, can't make it. Mm -hmm. Our last word for Fluency Builder, this thing came up. This thing came up. This thing came up. This is a great way of giving an excuse for why you can't make it to right. an event. Mm -hmm. So, I can't make it today because this thing came up. Like, something... Something happened. Something happened. Yeah. Let's listen to a few examples of this phrase so we can see how it's used in the wild. Example one. I'm sorry that I'm late. This thing came up at work and I had to stay to take care of it. Example two. I can't talk right now. Something came up. Example three. Sorry I missed the meeting. Something came up. Okay, great example and I guess it's perfectly clear now. Yes. So let's listen to our dialogue a third time, and now we're ready to understand everything. Hello, Samantha speaking. Hi, Samantha. This is Angela calling. Oh, hi, Angela. What's up? I'm just calling about our meeting today. I wonder, is it possible to reschedule our appointment in the afternoon? I have a bit of an emergency that I need to take care of. Let me see. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'm really sorry. I hope it doesn't inconvenience you too much. It's just this thing came up and... Angela, you know what? I can't make it to our meeting either. Why don't we postpone it to tomorrow afternoon at the same time? Sounds great. See you tomorrow. Angela? Angela, look up. See that lady over there who's trying on a red leather jacket? Isn't that Samantha? What? No wonder she told me she couldn't make it to the meeting. Oh no, I think she saw me. So Erica, have you ever canceled an appointment like this uh, under false pretenses? So for for a fake reason? For a fake reason to go shopping? Um, well, I may not have, you know, told my boss, so I can't make it to a meeting because this thing came up and then I really was going shopping. Mm -hmm. I've never done that.
It's a really common situation. Sometimes mm -hmm. you have an appointment at the doctor's or something, or at work, and you have to cancel it. Yes. So we're gonna learn some great language to help you cancel appointments today. Let's go straight to the dialogue then. We're going to be listening as Samantha and Angela have a phone conversation, and Angela is trying to cancel an appointment. And it's gonna be a little bit fast in the beginning, but when we come back, we will explain all the great vocabulary. Hi, Samantha. This is Angela calling. Oh, hi, Angela. What's up? I'm just calling about our meeting today. I wonder, is it possible to reschedule our appointment in the afternoon? I have a bit of an emergency that I need to take care of. Let me see. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'm really sorry. I hope it doesn't inconvenience you too much. It's just this thing came up and... Angela, you know what? I can't make it to our meeting either. Why don't we postpone it to tomorrow afternoon at the same time? Sounds great. See you tomorrow. Angela? Angela, look up. See that lady over there who's trying on a red leather jacket? Isn't that Samantha? What? No wonder she told me she couldn't make it to the meeting. Oh no, I think she saw me. Okay, we have some really interesting words that you probably listened to in this dialogue, so mm -hmm. let's start with language takeaway. Language takeaway. Today on Language Takeaway, we're bringing you three words. Uh, Erica, what's the first one? The first word is reschedule. 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 When you reschedule an appointment, you change it for another day or time. Exactly. Great. The second word that we have is inconvenience. 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 So to inconvenience someone is to... To make things not convenient for that person. <laughs> All right. So to make things a little bit difficult yeah. or to make things a little bit... Um, uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Inconvenience. And our third word is... Postpone. 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 We have some examples of the word postpone that will help you to understand its meaning a little bit better. Let's listen. Example one. Since Robert is late again, we have to postpone the meeting. Example two. I'm sorry, Simon, but your vacation has been postponed until next month. Example three. Unfortunately, the flight will be postponed. Okay, so basically postpone is to delay. That's right. Make it at a later time. At a later time. Mm -hmm. Okay, some great words there. And uh, we can listen to our dialogue a second time at a slower speed. Hello, Samantha speaking. Hi, Samantha. This is Angela calling. Oh, hi, Angela. What's up? I'm just calling about our meeting today. I wonder, is it possible to reschedule our appointment in the afternoon? I have a bit of an emergency that I need to take care of. Let me see. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'm really sorry. I hope it doesn't inconvenience you too much. It's just this thing came up and... Angela, you know what? I can't make it to our meeting either. Why don't we postpone it to tomorrow afternoon at the same time? Sounds great. See you tomorrow. Angela, Angela, look up. See that lady over there who's trying on a red leather jacket? Isn't that Samantha? What? No wonder she told me she couldn't make it to the meeting. Oh no! I think she saw me. Alright, so in this dialogue we had some really great phrases that we should look at in Fluency Builder. Fluency Builder we have three phrases for you today in Fluency Builder and the first one is so common, it's a great phrase. What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> so this is a very common way of saying hi. Yeah. What's up? 
How's it going? What's going on? Right. And now the interesting thing is that n- many people don't know how to answer this phrase. Yes, I see this all the time with my students. So if you say what's up, you should say not much. Not much. Nothing. Nothing. So what's up? Not much. Not much. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the next time someone tells you what's up, now you know what to answer. Yeah. Okay. Our second phrase is can't make it. Can't make it. I can't make it. We use this phrase when we want to say I cannot attend. I, I cannot make it. Yeah, I can't come. Right. So, if you're having a party today, I say, "Oh, I'm sorry, I can't make it." Mm-hmm. Yeah, it means I can't go. Exactly. Maybe one more example. So, Marco, we've got a meeting today at three o'clock. I can't make it. I'm recording today. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, can't make it. Mm -hmm. Our last word for fluency builder, this thing came up. This thing came up. This thing came up. This is a great way of giving an excuse for why you can't make it to an event. Mm -hmm. So, I can't make it today because this thing came up. Like, something... Something happened. Something happened. Yeah. Let's listen to a few examples of this phrase so we can see how it's used in the wild. Example one. I'm sorry that I'm late. This thing came up at work and I had to stay to take care of it. Example two. I can't talk right now. Something came up. Example three. Sorry I missed the meeting. Something came up. Okay, great example. And I guess it's perfectly clear now. Yes. So let's listen to our dialogue a third time, and now we're ready to understand everything. Hello, Samantha speaking. Hi, Samantha. This is Angela calling. Oh, hi, Angela. What's up? I'm just calling about our meeting today. I wonder, is it possible to reschedule our appointment in the afternoon? I have a bit of an emergency that I need to take care of. Let me see. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'm really sorry. I hope it doesn't inconvenience you too much. It's just this thing came up and... Angela, you know what? I can't make it to our meeting either. Why don't we postpone it to tomorrow afternoon at the same time? Sounds great. See you tomorrow. Angela? Angela, look up. See that lady over there who's trying on a red leather jacket? Isn't that Samantha? What? No wonder she told me she couldn't make it to the meeting. Oh no, I think she saw me. So Erica, have you ever canceled an appointment like this uh, under false pretenses? So for for a fake reason? For a fake reason to go shopping? Um, well, I may not have, you know, told my boss, so I can't make it to a meeting because this thing came up and then I really was going shopping. Mm -hmm. I've never done that. It's a really common situation sometimes. Mm -hmm. You have an appointment at the doctor's or something. Or at work. And you have to cancel it. Yes, so we're going to learn some great language to help you cancel appointments today. Let's go straight to the dialogue then. We're going to be listening as Samantha and Angela have a phone conversation and Angela is trying to cancel an appointment. And it's going to be a little bit fast in the beginning, but when we come back, we will explain all the great vocabulary. Hi, Samantha. This is Angela calling. Oh, hi, Angela. What's up? I'm just calling about our meeting today. I wonder, is it possible to reschedule our appointment in the afternoon? I have a bit of an emergency that I need to take care of. Let me see. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'm really sorry. I hope it doesn't inconvenience you too much. It's just this thing came up and... Angela, you know what? I can't make it to our meeting either. Why don't we postpone it to tomorrow afternoon at the same time? Sounds great. See you tomorrow. Angela? Angela, look up. See that lady over there who's trying on a red leather jacket? Isn't that Samantha? What? No wonder she told me she couldn't make it to the meeting. Oh no, I think she saw me. Okay, we have some really interesting words that you probably listened to in this dialogue, so Mm -hmm. let's start with language takeaway. Language takeaway. 
Today on Language Takeaway, we're bringing you three words.、Uh, Erica, what's the first one? The first word is reschedule. 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 When you reschedule an appointment, you change it for another day or time. Exactly. Great. The second word that we have is inconvenience. 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 So to inconvenience someone is to to make. Things not convenient for that person. <laughs>、right. So to make things a little bit difficult,、yeah. or to make things a little bit、um, uncomfortable, uncomfortable,、mm-hmm. inconvenience. And our third word is postpone. 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 We have some examples of the word postpone that will help you to understand its meaning a little bit better. Let's listen. Example one. Since Robert is late again, we have to postpone the meeting. Example two. I'm sorry, Simon, but your vacation has been postponed until next month. Example three. Unfortunately, the flight will be postponed. Okay, so basically, postpone is to delay. That's right. Make it at a later time. At a later time.、Mm-hmm. Okay, some great words there, and、uh, we can listen to our dialogue a second time at a slower speed. Hello, Samantha speaking. Hi, Samantha. This is Angela calling. Oh, hi, Angela. What's up? I'm just calling about our meeting today. I wonder. Is it possible to reschedule our appointment in the afternoon? I have a bit of an emergency that I need to take care of. Let me see. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'm really sorry. I hope it doesn't inconvenience you too much. It's just this thing came up, and Angela, you know what? I can't make it to our meeting either. Why don't we postpone it to tomorrow afternoon at the same time? Sounds great. See you tomorrow. Angela, Angela, look up. See that lady over there who's trying on a red leather jacket? Isn't that Samantha? What? No wonder she told me she couldn't make it to the meeting. Oh no! I think she saw me. All right. So in this dialogue, we had some really great phrases that we should look at in Fluency Builder. Fluency Builder. We have three phrases for you today in Fluency Builder, and the first one is so common. It's a great phrase. What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> so this is a very common way of saying hi. Yeah. What's up? How's it going? What's going on? Right. And now the interesting thing is that n- many people don't know how to answer this phrase. Yes, I see this all the time with my students. So if you say "What's up," you should say "Not much." Not much. Nothing. Nothing. So what's up? Not much. Not much. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the next time someone tells you "What's up," now you know what to answer. Yeah. Okay. Our second phrase is "Can't make it." Can't make it. I can't make it. We use this phrase when we want to say I cannot attend. I, I cannot make it. Yeah, I can't come. Right. So, if you're having a party today, I say, Oh, I'm sorry, I can't make it. Hmm.、Yeah, it means I can't go. Exactly. Maybe one more example. So, Marco, we've got a meeting today at three o'clock. I can't make it. I'm recording today. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, can't make it. Mm-hmm. Our last word for fluency builder. This thing came up. This thing came up. This thing came up. This is a great way of giving an excuse for why you can't make it. To right. An event.、Mm-hmm. So I can't make it today because this thing came up. Like something. Something happened. Something happened. Yeah. Let's listen to a few examples of this phrase so we can see how it's used in the wild. Example one. I'm sorry that I'm late. This thing came up at work, and I had to stay to take care of it. Example two. I can't talk right now. Something came up. Example three. Sorry, I missed the meeting. Something came up. Okay, great example, and I guess it's perfectly clear now. Yes. 
So let's listen to our dialogue a third time, and now we're ready to understand everything. Hello, Samantha speaking. Hi, Samantha. This is Angela calling. Oh, hi, Angela. What's up? I'm just calling about our meeting today. I wonder, is it possible to reschedule our appointment in the afternoon? I have a bit of an emergency that I need to take care of. Let me see. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'm really sorry. I hope it doesn't inconvenience you too much. It's just this thing came up and... Angela, you know what? I can't make it to our meeting either. Why don't we postpone it to tomorrow afternoon at the same time? Sounds great. See you tomorrow. Angela? Angela, look up. See that lady over there who's trying on a red leather jacket? Isn't that Samantha? What? No wonder she told me she couldn't make it to the meeting. Oh no, I think she saw me. So Erica, have you ever canceled an appointment like this uh, under false pretenses? So for for a fake reason? For a fake reason to go shopping? Um, well, I may not have, you know, told my boss so I can't make it to a meeting because this thing came up and then I really was going shopping mm -hmm. and I've never done that. Today, we're going to teach you some great phrases so that you can ask people to help you. Right. And I think this dialogue is with a new person at the office. Mm -hmm. So when you're new, you always need to ask people for favors. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to be asking for a favor. So Marco, what exactly is a favor? Something that a person does for you. Like a small, helpful thing. Uh, yeah, a small, helpful thing. So, mm -hmm. you know, like, can you pass me that pencil? Maybe that's even a favor. Yeah. Or... or Maybe, uh, can you pick me up on your way to work? Yeah, that's a favor. Mm -hmm. Or even lending money yep. to your friend. Yeah. That's a favor. Yeah. So that's what we're going to be talking about, favors and how to ask for one. Because you always have to do this at work. At work, with your friends, mm -hmm. with your family. So let's listen to the dialogue and then we'll come back and explain all the vocabulary. Um, sorry to bother you. Um, my name is Rachel. I'm new here. Can I ask you for a favor? Hi, Rachel. Welcome on board. I'm afraid I can't help you right now. I'm getting ready for a very important meeting. Excuse me, but can I bother you for a second? You know what? I'd love to help you, but I'm about to meet an important client. Do you want to ask Sean instead? Can you sit right over there? Sorry to interrupt you, Sean. Could you do me a quick favor? Actually, I'm working on a document that's due in a couple of minutes. I really can't talk right now. Sorry about that. Jeez! I just want to know where the bathroom is. What's wrong with you people? So, a pretty busy office. Pretty unhelpful <laughs> colleagues. I know, everyone's so busy, they didn't help this poor girl. Yeah, I hope she found the bathroom. <laughs> now let's take a look at the language from the dialogue. So let's start with language takeaway. Language takeaway. There's some great language in this dialogue, wasn't there? Yeah, a lot of uh, interesting phrases and words. Um, the first one that, that I saw that was really interesting is on board. On board. Welcome on board. Well, we've got some examples of how this phrase is used, so let's listen to them to help us understand the meaning. Example one. Welcome on board, Sarah. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Example two. We need to get our new office assistant on board as soon as possible. Example 3. We decided to bring Melissa on board to join the marketing team. So basically it means... Welcome to the company. Welcome to the company. Or... The team. Yeah. Welcome on board. So on board is the same as to the company. I guess also when you get on a ship, they'll tell you welcome on board. Yes, that's where it comes from. <laughs> or an airplane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome on board. Okay, let's take a look at our next word. About to. About to. I'm about to. 
I'm about to. So this is a great phrase to explain that you're about to do something. I'm going to do this thing really soon. Okay, so so for example, you can say, "I'm about to go out for lunch."、Mm-hmm. Or I could say, "Hey Marco, let's go record a show." I'm about to go into a meeting.、Mm-hmm, exactly. Right. Yeah. About to. Going to do something really soon. Okay. The next word we have is instead. 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 It means in the place of. In the place of. Yep. So, for example, if we're at dinner, I could say, "I'll have the chicken instead of the fish."、Mm-hmm. Right. Or I can say, "I wanted to buy a red sweater, but they didn't have one, so I bought a blue one instead." Instead.、Mm-hmm. Okay. So, in the place of. Yeah. And our last word for language takeaway: interrupt. 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 So when somebody interrupts you, they come in and they talk to you while you're doing something, or maybe while you're speaking, or maybe you're busy and、uh-huh. people come and and bother you, and bother you. Yeah. Okay. So interrupt. Interrupt. Okay. Some great words here in our dialogue, and now we can listen to it again. This time it's going to be a little bit slower, and you'll be able to understand the language a little bit better. Um, sorry to bother you. Um, my name is Rachel. I'm new here. Can I ask you for a favor? Hi, Rachel. Welcome on board. I'm afraid I can't help you right now. I'm getting ready for a very important meeting. Excuse me, but can I bother you for a second? You know what? I'd love to help you, but I'm about to meet an important client. Do you want to try Sean instead? He sits right over there. Sorry to interrupt you, Sean. Could you do me a quick favor? Actually, I'm working on a document that is due in a couple of minutes. I really can't talk to you right now. Sorry about that. <sighs> Jeez, I just want to know where the bathroom is. What's wrong with you people? Okay, so there are some great ways that you can ask someone for a favor, right? Yeah, we want to show you some really useful phrases for asking for help. So let's start with putting it together. Putting it together. Let's listen to some different ways of how you can ask someone for a favor. Example one. May I get you to do me a favor? Can you carry this package in your suitcase for me? Example two. Can I ask you a favor? Can you just finish this report for me? Example three. Will you do me a favor and pass me that file? Okay, so those were great examples of asking for a favor. Yeah. In our dialogue, we heard, "Can I ask you a favor?"、Mm-hmm. But we could also say. Can I get you to do me a favor? Right. Can I get you to do me a favor?、Mm-hmm. Also, I could say, "Will you do me a favor?" Will you do me a favor? Right. So those are different ways of asking for a favor. Let's say you want to ask someone for a favor, right? Mm-hmm. But they're busy. Right. So you'll need some phrases to help you do this. Exactly. You need some phrases to interrupt somebody. Uh huh. Right. So let's listen to some examples of what phrases you can use to begin to talk to someone. Yeah, to interrupt them. Okay. I hate to bother you, but I hate to bother you, but I'm sorry to bother you, but I'm sorry to bother you, but I don't mean to bother you, but I don't mean to bother you, but. Okay, so those are really nice and polite ways of beginning to talk to someone. Exactly, they're really useful at the office. So maybe you want to talk to your boss. You knock on his door, kind of open it a little bit, and say, "I'm sorry to bother you, but I was wondering if you have time for a meeting today."、Mm-hmm. Or you could say, "I hate to bother you, but do you have time for a meeting today?" Exactly.、Mm-hmm. So those are great ways of starting up a conversation. Yep. 
and maybe setting it up to ask for a favor, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we can combine them. I could say, I hate to bother you, but can you do me a favor? Perfect. Right? Yeah, really useful. So then, then you can ask someone for a favor. Yep. Okay, great stuff. So I guess we can listen to our dialogue again. Yeah, let's listen to our dialogue for the third time, and this time I'm sure you'll understand it a lot better. Um, sorry to bother you. Um, my name is Rachel. I'm new here. Can I ask you for a favor? Hi, Rachel. Welcome on board. I'm afraid I can't help you right now. I'm getting ready for a very important meeting. Excuse me, but can I bother you for a second? You know what? I'd love to help you, but I'm about to meet an important client. Do you want to ask Sean instead? Can you sit right over there? Sorry to interrupt you, Sean. Could you do me a quick favor? Actually, I'm working on a document that's due in a couple of minutes. I really can't talk right now. Sorry about that. Jeez! I just want to know where the bathroom is. What's wrong with you people? Today, we're going to teach you some great phrases so that you can ask people to help you. Right. And I think this dialogue is with a new person at the office. Mm -hmm. So when you're new, you always need to ask people for favors. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to be asking for a favor. So Marco, what exactly is a favor? Something that a person does for you. Like a small, helpful thing. Uh, yeah, a small, helpful thing. So, mm -hmm. you know, like... Can you pass me that pencil? Maybe that's even a favor. Yeah, or, or maybe, uh, can you pick me up on your way to work? Yeah, that's a favor. Mm -hmm. Or even lending money yep. to your friend. Yeah. That's a favor. Yeah. So that's what we're going to be talking about, favors and how to ask for one. Because you always have to do this at work. At work, with your friends, mm -hmm. with your family. So let's listen to the dialogue and then we'll come back and explain all the vocabulary. Um, sorry to bother you. Um, my name is Rachel. I'm new here. Can I ask you for a favor? Hi, Rachel. Welcome on board. I'm afraid I can't help you right now. I'm getting ready for a very important meeting. Excuse me, but can I bother you for a second? You know what? I'd love to help you, but I'm about to meet an important client. Do you want to ask Sean instead? Can you sit right over there? Sorry to interrupt you, Sean. Could you do me a quick favor? Actually, I'm working on a document that's due in a couple of minutes. I really can't talk right now. Sorry about that. Jeez! I just want to know where the bathroom is. What's wrong with you people? So, a pretty busy office. Pretty unhelpful <laughs> colleagues. I know, everyone's so busy, they didn't help this poor girl. Yeah, I hope she found the bathroom. <laughs> now let's take a look at the language from the dialogue. So let's start with language takeaway. Language takeaway. There's some great language in this dialogue, wasn't there? Yeah, a lot of uh, interesting phrases and words. Um, the first one that, that I saw that was really interesting is on board. On board. Welcome on board. Well, we've got some examples of how this phrase is used, so let's listen to them to help us understand the meaning. Example one. Welcome on board, Sarah. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Example two. We need to get our new office assistant on board as soon as possible. Example 3. We decided to bring Melissa on board to join the marketing team. So basically it means... Welcome to the company. Welcome to the company. Or... The team. Yeah. Welcome on board. So on board is the same as to the company. I guess also when you get on a ship, they'll tell you, welcome on board. Yes, that's where it comes from. <laughs> or an airplane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome on board. Okay, let's take a look at our next word. About to. About to. I'm about to. I'm about to. 
So this is a great phrase to explain that you're about to do something. I'm going to do this thing really soon. Okay, so so for example, you can say, "I'm about to go out for lunch."、Mm-hmm. Or I could say, "Hey Marco, let's go record a show." I'm about to go into a meeting.、Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. Yeah. About to. Going to do something really soon. Okay. The next word we have is instead. 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 It means in the place of. In the place of. Yep. So, for example, if we're at dinner, I could say, "I'll have the chicken instead of the fish."、Mm-hmm. Right. Or I can say, "I wanted to buy a red sweater, but they didn't have one, so I bought a blue one instead." Instead.、Mm-hmm. Okay. So, in the place of. Yep. And our last word for language takeaway: interrupt. 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 So when somebody interrupts you, they come in and they talk to you while you're doing something, or maybe while you're speaking, or maybe you're busy and、uh-huh. people come and and bother you. And bother you. Yeah. Okay. So interrupt. Interrupt. Okay. Some great words here in our dialogue, and now we can listen to it again. This time it's going to be a little bit slower. And you'll be able to understand the language a little bit better. Um, sorry to bother you. Um, my name is Rachel. I'm new here. Can I ask you for a favor? Hi, Rachel. Welcome on board. I'm afraid I can't help you right now. I'm getting ready for a very important meeting. Excuse me, but can I bother you for a second? You know what? I'd love to help you, but I'm about to meet an important client. Do you want to try Sean instead? He sits right over there. Sorry to interrupt you, Sean. Could you do me a quick favor? Actually, I'm working on a document that is due in a couple of minutes. I really can't talk to you right now. Sorry about that. <sighs> Jeez, I just want to know where the bathroom is. What's wrong with you people? Okay, so there are some great ways that you can ask someone for a favor, right? Yeah, we want to show you some really useful phrases for asking for help. So let's start with putting it together. Putting it together. Let's listen to some different ways of how you can ask someone for a favor. Example one. May I get you to do me a favor? Can you carry this package in your suitcase for me? Example two. Can I ask you a favor? Can you just finish this report for me? Example three. Will you do me a favor and pass me that file? Okay, so those were great examples of asking for a favor. Yeah. In our dialogue, we heard, "Can I ask you a favor?"、Mm-hmm. But we could also say, "Can I get you to do me a favor?" Right. Can I get you to do me a favor?、Mm-hmm. Also, I could say, "Will you do me a favor?" Will you do me a favor? Right. So those are different ways of asking for a favor. Let's say you want to ask someone for a favor, right? Mm-hmm. But they're busy. Right. So you'll need some phrases to help you do this. Exactly. You need some phrases to interrupt somebody. Uh huh. Right. So let's listen to some examples of what phrases you can use to begin to talk to someone. Yep. To interrupt them. Okay. I hate to bother you, but I hate to bother you, but I'm sorry to bother you, but. I'm sorry to bother you, but I don't mean to bother you. But I don't mean to bother you. But okay, so those are really nice and polite ways of beginning to talk to someone. Exactly, they're really useful at the office. So maybe you want to talk to your boss. You knock on his door, kind of open it a little bit, and say, "I'm sorry to bother you, but I was wondering if you have time for a meeting today."、Mm-hmm. Or you could say. I hate to bother you, but do you have time for a meeting today? Exactly.、Mm-hmm. So those are great ways of starting up a conversation. Yep. 
and maybe setting it up to ask for a favor,、mm-hmm. right?、Mm-hmm. So we can combine them. I could say, I hate to bother you, but can you do me a favor? Perfect. Right? Yeah, really useful. So then, then you can ask someone for a favor. Yep. Okay, great stuff. So I guess we can listen to our dialogue again. Yeah, let's listen to our dialogue for the third time. And this time, I'm sure you'll understand it a lot better. Um, sorry to bother you. Um, my name is Rachel. I'm new here. Can I ask you for a favor? Hi, Rachel. Welcome on board. I'm afraid I can't help you right now. I'm getting ready for a very important meeting. Excuse me, but can I bother you for a second? You know what? I'd love to help you, but I'm about to meet an important client. Do you want to ask Sean instead? He sits right over there. Sorry to interrupt you, Sean. Could you do me a quick favor? Actually, I'm working on a document that's due in a couple of minutes. I really can't talk right now. Sorry about that. Jeez, I just want to know where the bathroom is. What's wrong with you people? Today we're going to teach you some great phrases so that you can ask people to help you. Right, and I think this dialogue is with a new person at the office.、Mm-hmm. So when you're new, you always need to ask people for favors. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to be asking for a favor. So Marco, what exactly is a favor? Something that a person does for you. Like a small helpful thing.、Uh, yeah, a small helpful thing. So, you know, like, can you pass me that pencil? Maybe that's even a favor. Yeah. Or. or Maybe、uh, can you pick me up on your way to work? Yeah, that's a favor.、Mm-hmm. Or even lending money、yep. to your friend. Yeah, that's a favor. Yeah. So that's what we're going to be talking about: favors and how to ask for one. Because you always have to do this at work. At work with your friends,、mm-hmm. with your family. So let's listen to the dialogue, and then we'll come back and explain all the vocabulary. Um. Sorry to bother you.、Um, my name is Rachel. I'm new here. Can I ask you for a favor? Hi, Rachel. Welcome on board. I'm afraid I can't help you right now. I'm getting ready for a very important meeting. Excuse me, but can I bother you for a second? You know what? I'd love to help you, but I'm about to meet an important client. Do you want to ask Sean instead? He sits right over there. Sorry to interrupt you, Sean. Could you do me a quick favor? Actually, I'm working on a document that's due in a couple of minutes. I really can't talk right now. Sorry about that. Jeez, I just want to know where the bathroom is. What's wrong with you people? So a pretty busy office. Pretty unhelpful <laughs> colleagues. I know everyone's so busy; they didn't help this poor girl. Yeah, I hope she found the bathroom. <laughs> Now let's take a look at the language from the dialogue. So let's start with language takeaway. Language takeaway. There's some great language in this dialogue, wasn't there? Yeah, a lot of、uh, interesting phrases and words. Um, the first one that that I saw that was really interesting is on board. On board. Welcome on board. Well, we've got some examples of how this phrase is used, so let's listen to them to help us understand the meaning. Example one. Welcome on board, Sarah. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Example two. We need to get our new office assistant on board as soon as possible. Example three. We decided to bring Melissa on board to join the marketing team. So basically, it means welcome to the company. Welcome to the company. Or the team. Yeah. Welcome on board. So on board is the same as to the company. I guess also when you get on a ship, they'll tell you "Welcome on board." Yes, that's where it comes from. <laughs> Or an airplane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome on board. Okay, let's take a look at our next word. About to. About to. I'm about to. I'm about to. 
So this is a great phrase to explain that you're about to do something. I'm going to do this thing really soon. Okay, so so for example, you can say, "I'm about to go out for lunch."、Mm-hmm. Or I could say, "Hey Marco, let's go record a show." I'm about to go into a meeting.、Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. Yeah. About to. Going to do something really soon. Okay. The next word we have is instead. 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 It means in the place of. In the place of. Yep. So, for example, if we're at dinner, I could say, "I'll have the chicken instead of the fish."、Mm-hmm. Right. Or I can say, "I wanted to buy a red sweater, but they didn't have one, so I bought a blue one instead." Instead.、Mm-hmm. Okay. So, in the place of. Yep. And our last word for language takeaway: interrupt. 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 So when somebody interrupts you, they come in and they talk to you while you're doing something, or maybe while you're speaking, or maybe you're busy and、uh-huh. people come and and bother you. And bother you. Yeah. Okay. So interrupt. Interrupt. Okay. Some great words here in our dialogue, and now we can listen to it again. This time it's going to be a little bit slower, and you'll be able to understand the language a little bit better. Um, sorry to bother you. Um, my name is Rachel. I'm new here. Can I ask you for a favor? Hi, Rachel. Welcome on board. I'm afraid I can't help you right now. I'm getting ready for a very important meeting. Excuse me, but can I bother you for a second? You know what? I'd love to help you, but I'm about to meet an important client. Do you want to try Sean instead? He sits right over there. Sorry to interrupt you, Sean. Could you do me a quick favor? Actually, I'm working on a document that is due in a couple of minutes. I really can't talk to you right now. Sorry about that. <sighs> Jeez, I just want to know where the bathroom is. What's wrong with you people? Okay, so there are some great ways that you can ask someone for a favor, right? Yeah, we want to show you some really useful phrases for asking for help. So let's start with putting it together. Putting it together. Let's listen to some different ways of how you can ask someone for a favor. Example one. May I get you to do me a favor? Can you carry this package in your suitcase for me? Example two. Can I ask you a favor? Can you just finish this report for me? Example three. Will you do me a favor and pass me that file? Okay, so those were great examples of asking for a favor. Yeah. In our dialogue, we heard, "Can I ask you a favor?"、Mm-hmm. But we could also say. Can I get you to do me a favor? Right. Can I get you to do me a favor?、Mm-hmm. Also, I could say, "Will you do me a favor?" Will you do me a favor? Right. So those are different ways of asking for a favor. Let's say you want to ask someone for a favor, right? Mm-hmm. But they're busy. Right. So you'll need some phrases to help you do this. Exactly. You need some phrases to interrupt somebody. Uh huh. Right. So let's listen to some examples of what phrases you can use to begin to talk to someone. Yeah, to interrupt them. Okay. I hate to bother you, but I hate to bother you, but I'm sorry to bother you, but I'm sorry to bother you, but I don't mean to bother you, but I don't mean to bother you, but. Okay, so those are really nice and polite ways of beginning to talk to someone. Exactly, they're really useful at the office. So maybe you want to talk to your boss. You knock on his door, kind of open it a little bit, and say, "I'm sorry to bother you, but I was wondering if you have time for a meeting today."、Mm-hmm. Or you could say, "I hate to bother you, but do you have time for a meeting today?" Exactly.、Mm-hmm. So those are great ways of starting up a conversation. Yep. 
and maybe setting it up to ask for a favor, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we can combine them. I could say, I hate to bother you, but can you do me a favor? Perfect. Right? Yeah, really useful. So then, then you can ask someone for a favor. Yep. Okay, great stuff. So I guess we can listen to our dialogue again. Yeah, let's listen to our dialogue for the third time. And this time, I'm sure you'll understand it a lot better. Um, sorry to bother you. Um, my name is Rachel. I'm new here. Can I ask you for a favor? Hi, Rachel. Welcome on board. I'm afraid I can't help you right now. I'm getting ready for a very important meeting. Excuse me, but can I bother you for a second? You know what? I'd love to help you, but I'm about to meet an important client. Do you want to ask Sean instead? Can you sit right over there? Sorry to interrupt you, Sean. Could you do me a quick favor? Actually, I'm working on a document that's due in a couple of minutes. I really can't talk right now. Sorry about that. Jeez! I just want to know where the bathroom is. What's wrong with you people? Today, we're going to teach you some great phrases so that you can ask people to help you. Right. And I think this dialogue is with a new person at the office. Mm -hmm. So when you're new, you always need to ask people for favors. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to be asking for a favor. So Marco, what exactly is a favor? Something that a person does for you. Like a small, helpful thing. Uh, yeah, a small, helpful thing. So, mm -hmm. you know, like, can you pass me that pencil? Maybe that's even a favor. Yeah. Or... or Maybe, uh, can you pick me up on your way to work? Yeah, that's a favor. Mm -hmm. Or even lending money yep. to your friend. Yeah. That's a favor. Yeah. So that's what we're going to be talking about, favors and how to ask for one. Because you always have to do this at work. At work, with your friends, mm -hmm. with your family. So let's listen to the dialogue and then we'll come back and explain all the vocabulary. Um, sorry to bother you. Um, my name is Rachel. I'm new here. Can I ask you for a favor? Hi, Rachel. Welcome on board. I'm afraid I can't help you right now. I'm getting ready for a very important meeting. Excuse me, but can I bother you for a second? You know what? I'd love to help you, but I'm about to meet an important client. Do you want to ask Sean instead? Can you sit right over there? Sorry to interrupt you, Sean. Could you do me a quick favor? Actually, I'm working on a document that's due in a couple of minutes. I really can't talk right now. Sorry about that. Jeez! I just want to know where the bathroom is. What's wrong with you people? So, a pretty busy office. Pretty unhelpful <laughs> colleagues. I know, everyone's so busy, they didn't help this poor girl. Yeah, I hope she found the bathroom. <laughs> now let's take a look at the language from the dialogue. So let's start with language takeaway. Language takeaway. There's some great language in this dialogue, wasn't there? Yeah, a lot of uh, interesting phrases and words. Um, the first one that, that I saw that was really interesting is on board. On board. Welcome on board. Well, we've got some examples of how this phrase is used, so let's listen to them to help us understand the meaning. Example one. Welcome on board, Sarah. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Example two. We need to get our new office assistant on board as soon as possible. Example 3 We decided to bring Melissa on board to join the marketing team. So basically it means... Welcome to the company. Welcome to the company. Or... The team. Yeah. Welcome on board. So on board is the same as to the company. I guess also when you get on a ship, they'll tell you, welcome on board. Yes, that's where it comes from. <laughs> or an airplane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome on board. Okay, let's take a look at our next word. About to. About to. I'm about to. I'm about to. 
So this is a great phrase to explain that you're about to do something. I'm going to do this thing really soon. Okay, so so for example, you can say, "I'm about to go out for lunch."、Mm-hmm. Or I could say, "Hey Marco, let's go record a show." I'm about to go into a meeting.、Mm-hmm, exactly. Right. Yeah. About to. Going to do something really soon. Okay. The next word we have is instead. 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 It means in the place of. In the place of. Yep. So, for example, if we're at dinner, I could say, "I'll have the chicken instead of the fish."、Mm-hmm. Right. Or I can say, "I wanted to buy a red sweater, but they didn't have one, so I bought a blue one instead." Instead.、Mm-hmm. Okay. So, in the place of. Yep. And our last word for language takeaway: interrupt. 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 So when somebody interrupts you, they come in and they talk to you while you're doing something, or maybe while you're speaking, or maybe you're busy and、uh-huh. people come and and bother you. And bother you. Yeah. Okay. So interrupt. Interrupt. Okay. Some great words here in our dialogue, and now we can listen to it again. This time it's going to be a little bit slower. And you'll be able to understand the language a little bit better. Um, sorry to bother you. Um, my name is Rachel. I'm new here. Can I ask you for a favor? Hi, Rachel. Welcome on board. I'm afraid I can't help you right now. I'm getting ready for a very important meeting. Excuse me, but can I bother you for a second? You know what? I'd love to help you, but I'm about to meet an important client. Do you want to try Sean instead? He sits right over there. Sorry to interrupt you, Sean. Could you do me a quick favor? Actually, I'm working on a document that is due in a couple of minutes. I really can't talk to you right now. Sorry about that. <sighs> Jeez, I just want to know where the bathroom is. What's wrong with you people? Okay, so there are some great ways that you can ask someone for a favor, right? Yeah, we want to show you some really useful phrases for asking for help. So let's start with putting it together. Putting it together. Let's listen to some different ways of how you can ask someone for a favor. Example one. May I get you to do me a favor? Can you carry this package in your suitcase for me? Example two. Can I ask you a favor? Can you just finish this report for me? Example three. Will you do me a favor and pass me that file? Okay, so those were great examples of asking for a favor. Yeah. In our dialogue, we heard, "Can I ask you a favor?"、Mm-hmm. But we could also say, "Can I get you to do me a favor?" Right. Can I get you to do me a favor?、Mm-hmm. Also, I could say, "Will you do me a favor?" Will you do me a favor? Right. So those are different ways of asking for a favor. Let's say you want to ask someone for a favor, right? Mm-hmm. But they're busy, right? So you'll need some phrases to help you do this. Exactly. You need some phrases to interrupt somebody. Uh huh. Right. So let's listen to some examples of what phrases you can use to begin to talk to someone. Yeah, to interrupt them. Okay. I hate to bother you, but I hate to bother you, but I'm sorry to bother you, but. I'm sorry to bother you, but I don't mean to bother you. But I don't mean to bother you. But okay, so those are really nice and polite ways of beginning to talk to someone. Exactly, they're really useful at the office. So maybe you want to talk to your boss. You knock on his door, kind of open it a little bit, and say, "I'm sorry to bother you, but I was wondering if you have time for a meeting today."、Mm-hmm. Or you could say. I hate to bother you, but do you have time for a meeting today? Exactly.、Mm-hmm. So those are great ways of starting up a conversation. Yep. 
and maybe setting it up to ask for a favor, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we can combine them. I could say, I hate to bother you, but can you do me a favor? Perfect. Right? Yeah, really useful. So then, then you can ask someone for a favor. Yep. Okay, great stuff. So I guess we can listen to our dialogue again. Yeah, let's listen to our dialogue for the third time. And this time, I'm sure you'll understand it a lot better. Um, sorry to bother you. Um, my name is Rachel. I'm new here. Can I ask you for a favor? Hi, Rachel. Welcome on board. I'm afraid I can't help you right now. I'm getting ready for a very important meeting. Excuse me, but can I bother you for a second? You know what? I'd love to help you, but I'm about to meet an important client. Do you want to ask Sean instead? Can you sit right over there? Sorry to interrupt you, Sean. Could you do me a quick favor? Actually, I'm working on a document that's due in a couple of minutes. I really can't talk right now. Sorry about that. Jeez! I just want to know where the bathroom is. What's wrong with you people? Today, we're going to teach you some great phrases so that you can ask people to help you. Right. And I think this dialogue is with a new person at the office. Mm -hmm. So when you're new, you always need to ask people for favors. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to be asking for a favor. So Marco, what exactly is a favor? Something that a person does for you. Like a small, helpful thing. Uh, yeah, a small, helpful thing. So, mm. you know, like, can you pass me that pencil? Maybe that's even a favor. Yeah. Or... or Maybe, uh, can you pick me up on your way to work? Yeah, that's a favor. Mm -hmm. Or even lending money yep. to your friend. Yeah. That's a favor. Yeah. So that's what we're going to be talking about, favors and how to ask for one. Because you always have to do this at work. At work, with your friends, mm -hmm. with your family. So let's listen to the dialogue and then we'll come back and explain all the vocabulary. Um, sorry to bother you. Um, my name is Rachel. I'm new here. Can I ask you for a favor? Hi, Rachel. Welcome on board. I'm afraid I can't help you right now. I'm getting ready for a very important meeting. Excuse me, but can I bother you for a second? You know what? I'd love to help you, but I'm about to meet an important client. Do you want to ask Sean instead? Can you sit right over there? Sorry to interrupt you, Sean. Could you do me a quick favor? Actually, I'm working on a document that's due in a couple of minutes. I really can't talk right now. Sorry about that. Jeez! I just want to know where the bathroom is. What's wrong with you people? So, a pretty busy office. Pretty unhelpful <laughs> colleagues. I know, everyone's so busy, they didn't help this poor girl. Yeah, I hope she found the bathroom. <laughs> now let's take a look at the language from the dialogue. So let's start with language takeaway. Language takeaway. There's some great language in this dialogue, wasn't there? Yeah, a lot of uh, interesting phrases and words. Um, the first one that, that I saw that was really interesting is on board. On board. Welcome on board. Well, we've got some examples of how this phrase is used, so let's listen to them to help us understand the meaning. Example one. Welcome on board, Sarah. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Example two. We need to get our new office assistant on board as soon as possible. Example 3. We decided to bring Melissa on board to join the marketing team. So basically it means... Welcome to the company. Welcome to the company. Or... The team. Yeah. Welcome on board. So on board is the same as to the company. I guess also when you get on a ship, they'll tell you, welcome on board. Yes, that's where it comes from. <laughs> or an airplane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome on board. Okay, let's take a look at our next word. About to. About to. I'm about to. I'm about to. 
So this is a great phrase to explain that you're about to do something. I'm going to do this thing really soon. Okay, so so for example, you can say, "I'm about to go out for lunch."、Mm-hmm. Or I could say, "Hey Marco, let's go record a show." I'm about to go into a meeting.、Mm-hmm, exactly. Right. Yeah. About to. Going to do something really soon. Okay. The next word we have is instead. 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 It means in the place of. In the place of. Yep. So, for example, if we're at dinner, I could say, "I'll have the chicken instead of the fish."、Mm-hmm. Right. Or I can say, "I wanted to buy a red sweater, but they didn't have one, so I bought a blue one instead." Instead.、Mm-hmm. Okay. So, in the place of. Yeah. And our last word for language takeaway: interrupt. 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 So when somebody interrupts you, they come in and they talk to you while you're doing something, or maybe while you're speaking, or maybe you're busy and、uh-huh. people come and and bother you. And bother you. Yeah. Okay. So interrupt. Interrupt. Okay. Some great words here in our dialogue, and now we can listen to it again. This time it's going to be a little bit slower, and you'll be able to understand the language a little bit better. Um, sorry to bother you. Um, my name is Rachel. I'm new here. Can I ask you for a favor? Hi, Rachel. Welcome on board. I'm afraid I can't help you right now. I'm getting ready for a very important meeting. Excuse me, but can I bother you for a second? You know what? I'd love to help you, but I'm about to meet an important client. Do you want to try Sean instead? He sits right over there. Sorry to interrupt you, Sean. Could you do me a quick favor? Actually, I'm working on a document that is due in a couple of minutes. I really can't talk to you right now. Sorry about that. <sighs> Jeez, I just want to know where the bathroom is. What's wrong with you people? Okay, so there are some great ways that you can ask someone for a favor, right? Yeah, we want to show you some really useful phrases for asking for help. So let's start with putting it together. Putting it together. Let's listen to some different ways of how you can ask someone for a favor. Example one. May I get you to do me a favor? Can you carry this package in your suitcase for me? Example two. Can I ask you a favor? Can you just finish this report for me? Example three. Will you do me a favor and pass me that file? Okay, so those were great examples of asking for a favor. Yeah. In our dialogue, we heard, "Can I ask you a favor?"、Mm-hmm. But we could also say. Can I get you to do me a favor? Right. Can I get you to do me a favor?、Mm-hmm. Also, I could say, "Will you do me a favor?" Will you do me a favor? Right. So those are different ways of asking for a favor. Let's say you want to ask someone for a favor, right? Mm-hmm. But they're busy. Right. So you'll need some phrases to help you do this. Exactly. You need some phrases to interrupt somebody. Uh huh. Right. So let's listen to some examples of what phrases you can use to begin to talk to someone. Yeah, to interrupt them. Okay. I hate to bother you, but I hate to bother you, but I'm sorry to bother you, but I'm sorry to bother you, but I don't mean to bother you, but I don't mean to bother you, but. Okay, so those are really nice and polite ways of beginning to talk to someone. Exactly, they're really useful at the office. So maybe you want to talk to your boss. You knock on his door, kind of open it a little bit, and say, "I'm sorry to bother you, but I was wondering if you have time for a meeting today."、Mm-hmm. Or you could say, "I hate to bother you, but do you have time for a meeting today?" Exactly.、Mm-hmm. So those are great ways of starting up a conversation. Yep. 
and maybe setting it up to ask for a favor, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we can combine them. I could say, I hate to bother you, but can you do me a favor? Perfect. Right? Yeah, really useful. So then, then you can ask someone for a favor. Yep. Okay, great stuff. So I guess we can listen to our dialogue again. Yeah, let's listen to our dialogue for the third time, and this time I'm sure you'll understand it a lot better. Um, sorry to bother you. Um, my name is Rachel. I'm new here. Can I ask you for a favor? Hi, Rachel. Welcome on board. I'm afraid I can't help you right now. I'm getting ready for a very important meeting. Excuse me, but can I bother you for a second? You know what? I'd love to help you, but I'm about to meet an important client. Do you want to ask Sean instead? Can you sit right over there? Sorry to interrupt you, Sean. Could you do me a quick favor? Actually, I'm working on a document that's due in a couple of minutes. I really can't talk right now. Sorry about that. Jeez! I just want to know where the bathroom is. What's wrong with you people? I think one of the most important things when you go shopping is to get a good price. That's right. So we're going to be teaching you how to bargain. So Marco, you just mentioned a really great word. Um, let's look at it in vocabulary preview. Vocabulary preview. All right. So we're going to preview the word bargain today. Bargain. 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 Now, this is an interesting word because it's a verb and a noun. That's right. Um, so a bargain is a good price, right? Okay, so a bargain is a good price. Yeah, this t-shirt was a bargain. Um, I only paid a dollar for it. Okay, so that is a bargain. Yes. But to bargain as a verb. Um, to try and get a good price. So it's very similar to negotiate. Yeah, so I would say uh, it costs $100. And then I would say maybe, it, no, I'll give you $50. Uh, 75 And then I'll say 60 Etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. <laughs> <laughs> and that's to bargain, right? Yep. Okay, so we're going to be bargaining. Uh, let's listen to the dialogue for the first time as we have a woman bargaining in a store, right? That's right. Hello, may I help you? Yeah, this dress is really nice. How much is it? That one is $150. $150? What about this other one over here? That's $140. Um, that's a bit out of my price range. Can you give me a better deal? This is an exclusive design by Damarco. It's a bargain at that price. Well, I don't know. I think I'll shop around. Okay, okay. How about a hundred dollars? That's still more than I wanted to spend. What if I take both dresses? Okay, I can give you a special discount just because you seem like a nice person. A hundred and ninety for both. Mm. I don't know. It's still a bit pricey. Thanks anyway. Okay, my final price, $100 for both. That's two for the price of one, and that's my last offer. Great! You've got a deal. All right, that was some good bargaining skills right there. Yeah, and you know what? She used a lot of good language to get uh, a cheaper price, didn't she? Yeah, yeah, that was good. So let's take a look at this language in Language Takeaway. Language takeaway. Okay, the first word we have in language takeaway today. Price range. Price range. Price range. Price range. Price range. What does that mean exactly? So price range is uh, the minimum and the maximum that you're willing to spend for a thing that you want to buy. Exactly. So in the dialogue we heard, it's out of my price range. It's more than I can spend. More than I could spend. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's look at our next word. Shop around. Shop around. Shop around. Shop around. So she said, I think, I think I'll shop around. Right. Um, so she wants to check in a few other stores to see if there's a better price. If I shop around, I'm going and trying to compare prices maybe. Exactly. This is a really good um, shopping technique. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. And let's look at our last word. Pricey. 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 
So something that's pricey is... Expensive. Expensive. Yep, this is a more sort of informal way of saying expensive. Exactly. So instead of saying, wow, that car is really expensive. It's really pricey. It's really pricey. Yeah. Okay, let's listen to our dialogue for the second time, and it's going to be slowed down a bit. So you'll understand some of these great words a little bit better. Hello, may I help you? Yeah, this dress is really nice. How much is it? That one is $150. $150? What about this other one over here? That's $140. Hmm, that's a bit out of my price range. Can you give me a better deal? This is an exclusive design by Da Marco. It's a bargain at that price. Mm, well, I don't know. I think I'll shop around. Okay, okay. How about $100? That's still more than I wanted to spend. What if I take both dresses? Okay. I can give you a special discount just because you seem like a nice person. $190 for both. I don't know. It's still a bit pricey. Thanks anyway. Okay. My final price. $100 for both. That's two for the price of one. That's my last offer. Great! You've got a deal! So we've covered the language in this dialogue. Now let's take a look at some of the phrases in putting it together. Putting it together. So Marco, in this dialogue, there's a lot of really useful phrases um, to help you get a better price when you shop, right? Exactly. So the first one we have is, can you give me a better deal? Can you give me a better deal? Can you give me a better deal? So if I'm shopping and something is too expensive, yeah. I would use this sentence with the shopkeeper. Yeah, so you might say, um, hey, this is out of my price range. Could you give me a better deal? Can you give me a better deal? Yeah. Okay, we have some examples of can you give me a better deal? Let's listen. Example one. I really like this shirt, but it's too expensive. Can you give me a better deal? Example two. Can you give me a better price on this car? I really don't have that much money. So you can see here that you can say, can you give me a better deal? Or can you give me a better price? All right, let's take a look at the next phrase. That's still more than I wanted to spend. That's still more than I wanted to spend. That's still more than I wanted to spend. So if the seller suggests a really high price, you can say, That's still more than I wanted to spend. So basically, you're telling the shopkeeper, Still too expensive. It's still too expensive. Yeah. You still don't want to spend that much. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a look at our last phrase. That's my last offer. That's my last offer. That's my last offer. Now this could work both ways. It could be the shopkeeper that's telling you that, that's my lowest price. Right. Or you could say, that's my last offer. That's my highest price if you are buying it. Right. Because sometimes when you're bargaining, the shopkeeper will say, all right, what's your best offer? How much will you pay? $100. That's my final offer. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. So we've looked at a lot of great phrases and words, and now you're ready to bargain and also listen to this dialogue for the third time. And then we'll come back and talk some more. Hello, may I help you? Yeah, this dress is really nice. How much is it? That one is $150. $150. What about this other one over here? That's $140. Um, that's a bit out of my price range. Can you give me a better deal? This is an exclusive design by Damarco. It's a bargain at that price. Well, I don't know. I think I'll shop around. Okay, okay. How about $100? Still more than I wanted to spend. What if I take both dresses? Okay, I can give you a special discount just because you seem like a nice person. 190 for both. Mm, I don't know. Still a bit pricey. Thanks anyway. Okay, my final price. $100 for both. That's two for the price of one, and that's my last offer. Great! You got a deal. All right, so I know that in Canada, it's not really common to bargain, right? No, it, it really isn't. Like, even when you go to the market to buy fruits and vegetables, uh, it's, it's very, very rare to bargain with the mm -hmm. shopkeeper. Mm -hmm.
I think one of the most important things when you go shopping is to get a good price. That's right. So we're going to be teaching you how to bargain. So Marco, you just mentioned a really great word.、Um, let's look at it in vocabulary preview. Vocabulary preview. All right. So we're going to preview the word bargain today. Bargain. 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 Now this is an interesting word because it's a verb and a noun. That's right.、Um, so a bargain is a good price, right? Okay, so a bargain is a good price. Yeah, this T-shirt was a bargain.、Um, I only paid a dollar for it. Okay, so that is a bargain. Yes, but to bargain as a verb,、um, to try and get a good price. So it's very similar to negotiate. Yeah, so I would say、uh, it costs a hundred dollars. And then I would say maybe no, I'll give you fifty. Uh, seventy-five. And then I'll say sixty. Etc. Etc. <laughs> <laughs> and that's to bargain, right? Yep. Okay, so we're gonna be bargaining.、Uh, let's listen to the dialogue for the first time as we have a woman bargaining in a store, right? That's right. Hello, may I help you? Yeah, this dress is really nice. How much is it? That one is one hundred fifty dollars. One hundred and fifty dollars. What about this other one over here? That's one hundred and forty. Um, that's a bit out of my price range. Can you give me a better deal? This is an exclusive design by Damarco. It's a bargain at that price. Well, I don't know. I think I'll shop around. Okay, okay. How about a hundred dollars? That's still more than I wanted to spend. What if I take both dresses? Okay, I can give you a special discount just because you seem like a nice person. A hundred and ninety for both. I don't know.、It's、still a bit pricey. Thanks anyway. Okay, my final price: one hundred dollars for both. That's two for the price of one, and that's my last offer. Great! You got a deal. All right, that was some good bargaining skills right there. Yeah, and you know what? She used a lot of good language to get、uh, a cheaper price, didn't she? Yeah, yeah, that was good. So let's take a look at this language in language takeaway. Language takeaway. Okay, the first word we have in language takeaway today: price range. Price range. Price range. Price range. Price range. What does that mean exactly? So, price range is、uh, the minimum and the maximum that you're willing to spend for a thing that you want to buy. Exactly. So, in the dialogue, we heard it's out of my price range. It's more than I can spend. More than I could spend. Yep. Okay. Okay. Let's look at our next word. Shop around. Shop around. Shop around. Shop around. So she said, "I think I think I'll shop around." Right.、Um, so she wants to check in a few other stores to see if there's a better price. If I shop around, I'm going and trying to compare prices, maybe. Exactly. This is a really good、um, shopping technique. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay, and let's look at our last word, pricey. 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 So something that's pricey is expensive. Expensive. Yep. This is a more sort of informal way of saying expensive. Exactly. So instead of saying, "Wow, that car is really expensive," it's really pricey. It's really pricey. Yeah. Okay. Let's listen to our dialogue for the second time, and it's going to be slowed down a bit, so you'll understand some of these great words a little bit better. Hello. May I help you? Yeah. This dress is really nice. How much is it? That one is one hundred fifty dollars. One hundred and fifty dollars. What about this other one over here? That's one hundred forty. Hmm, that's a bit out of my price range. Can you give me a better deal? This is an exclusive design by Da Marco. It's a bargain at that price. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I think I'll shop around. Okay. Okay. How about one hundred dollars? That's still more than I wanted to spend. What if I take both dresses? Okay, I can give you a special discount just because you seem like a nice person. One hundred ninety dollars for both. I don't know. It's still a bit pricey. Thanks anyway. Okay, my final price: one hundred dollars for both. That's two for the price of one. That's my last offer. Great, you've got a deal. So we've covered the language in this dialogue. Now let's take a look at some of the phrases in putting it together. 
putting it together. So, Marco, in this dialogue, there's a lot of really useful phrases、um, to help you get a better price when you shop, right? Exactly. So, the first one we have is, "Can you give me a better deal?" Can you give me a better deal? Can you give me a better deal? So, if I'm shopping and something is too expensive, yeah, I would use this sentence with the shopkeeper. Yeah. So you might say.、Um, Hey, this is out of my price range. Could you give me a better deal? Can you give me a better deal? Yeah. Okay. We have some examples of "Can you give me a better deal?" Let's listen. Example one. I really like this shirt, but it's too expensive. Can you give me a better deal? Example two. Can you give me a better price on this car? I really don't have that much money. So you can see here that you can say, "Can you give me a better deal?" or "Can you give me a better price?" All right, let's take a look at the next phrase. That's still more than I wanted to spend. That's still more than I wanted to spend. That's still more than I wanted to spend. So if the seller suggests a really high price, you can say, "That's still more than I wanted to spend." So basically, you're telling the shopkeeper, "Still too expensive." It's still too expensive.、Yeah. You still don't want to spend that much.、Mm-hmm. All right. Let's take a look at our last phrase. That's my last offer. That's my last offer. That's my last offer. Now this could work both ways. It could be the shopkeeper that's telling you that. That's my lowest price. Right. Or you could say, "That's my last offer." That's my highest price. If you are buying it. Right. Because sometimes when you're bargaining, the shopkeeper will say, "All right, what's your best offer? How much will you pay?" Hundred dollars. That's my final offer. Exactly.、Mm-hmm. All right. So we've looked at a lot of great phrases and words, and now you're ready to bargain and also listen to this dialogue for the third time, and then we'll come back and talk some more. Hello. May I help you? Yeah. This dress is really nice. How much is it? That one is one hundred fifty dollars. One hundred and fifty dollars. What about this other one over here? That's one hundred and forty. Um, that's a bit out of my price range. Can you give me a better deal? This is an exclusive design by Damarco. It's a bargain at that price. Well, I don't know. I think I'll shop around. Okay, okay. How about a hundred dollars? That's still more than I wanted to spend. What if I take both dresses? Okay, I can give you a special discount just because you seem like a nice person. A hundred and ninety for both. I don't know.、It's、still a bit pricey. Thanks anyway. Okay, my final price: one hundred dollars for both. That's two for the price of one, and that's my last offer. Great! You got a deal. All right. So I know that in Canada, it's not really common to bargain, right? No, it it really isn't. Like even when you go to the market to buy fruits and vegetables,、uh, it's, it's very very rare to bargain with the mm-hmm. shopkeeper. Mm-hmm. I think one of the most important things when you go shopping is to get a good price. That's right. So we're going to be teaching you how to bargain. So Marco, you just mentioned a really great word.、Um, let's look at it in vocabulary preview. Vocabulary preview. All right. So we're going to preview the word bargain today. Bargain. 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 Now this is an interesting word because it's a verb and a noun. That's right.、Um, so a bargain is a good price, right? Okay, so a bargain is a good price. Yeah, this T-shirt was a bargain.、Um, I only paid a dollar for it. Okay, so that is a bargain. Yes, but to bargain as a verb,、um, to try and get a good price. So it's very similar to negotiate. Yeah, so I would say、uh, it costs a hundred dollars. And then I would say maybe no, I'll give you fifty. Uh, seventy-five. And then I'll say sixty. Et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> <laughs> and that's to bargain, right? Yep. Okay, so we're gonna be bargaining.、Uh, let's listen to the dialogue for the first time, as we have a woman bargaining in a store, right? That's right. Hello, may I help you? Yeah, this dress is really nice. How much is it? That one is one hundred fifty dollars. One hundred and fifty dollars. What about this other one over here? That's one hundred and forty. Um, that's a bit out of my price range. Can you give me a better deal? This is an exclusive design by Damarco. It's a bargain at that price. Well, I don't know. 
I think I'll shop around. Okay, okay. How about a hundred dollars? That's still more than I wanted to spend. What if I take both dresses? Okay, I can give you a special discount just because you seem like a nice person. A hundred and ninety for both. Mm, I don't know. It's still a bit pricey. Thanks anyway. Okay, my final price: one hundred dollars for both. That's two for the price of one, and that's my last offer. Great, you got a deal. All right, that was some good bargaining skills right there. Yeah, and you know what? She used a lot of good language to get、uh, a cheaper price, didn't she? Yeah, yeah, that was good. So let's take a look at this language in language takeaway. Language takeaway. Okay, the first word we have in language takeaway today: price range. Price range. Price range. Price range. Price range. What does that mean exactly? So price range is、uh, the minimum and the maximum that you're willing to spend for a thing that you want to buy. Exactly. So in the dialogue we heard, it's out of my price range. It's more than I can spend. More than I could spend. Yep. Okay. Okay. Let's look at our next word: shop around. Shop around. Shop around. Shop around. So she said, "I think I think I'll shop around." Right.、Um, so she wants to check in a few other stores to see if there's a better price. If I shop around, I'm going and trying to compare prices, maybe. Exactly. This is a really good、um, shopping technique. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay, and let's look at our last word: pricey. 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 So something that's pricey is expensive. Expensive. Yep. This is a more sort of informal way of saying expensive. Exactly. So instead of saying, "Wow, that car is really expensive," it's really pricey. It's really pricey. Yeah. Okay. Let's listen to our dialogue for the second time, and it's going to be slowed down a bit. So you'll understand some of these great words a little bit better. Hello. May I help you? Yeah. This dress is really nice. How much is it? That one is one hundred fifty dollars. A hundred and fifty dollars. What about this other one over here? That's one hundred forty. Hmm, that's a bit out of my price range. Can you give me a better deal? This is an exclusive design by Da Marco. It's a bargain at that price. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I think I'll shop around. Okay. Okay. How about one hundred dollars? That's still more than I wanted to spend. What if I take both dresses? Okay, I can give you a special discount just because you seem like a nice person. One hundred ninety dollars for both. I don't know. It's still a bit pricey. Thanks anyway. Okay, my final price: one hundred dollars for both. That's two for the price of one. That's my last offer. Great, you've got a deal. So we've covered the language in this dialogue. Now let's take a look at some of the phrases in putting it together. Putting it together. So Marco, in this dialogue, there's a lot of really useful phrases、um, to help you get a better price when you shop, right? Exactly. So the first one we have is, "Can you give me a better deal?" Can you give me a better deal? Can you give me a better deal? So if I'm shopping and something is too expensive, yeah, I would use this sentence with the shopkeeper. Yeah. So you might say,、um, "Hey, this is out of my price range. Could you give me a better deal?" Can you give me a better deal? Yeah. Okay. We have some examples of "Can you give me a better deal?" Let's listen. Example one. I really like this shirt, but it's too expensive. Can you give me a better deal? Example two. Can you give me a better price on this car? I really don't have that much money. So you can see here that you can say, "Can you give me a better deal?" or "Can you give me a better price?" All right, let's take a look at the next phrase. That's still more than I wanted to spend. That's still more than I wanted to spend. That's still more than I wanted to spend. So if the seller suggests a really high price, you can say, "That's still more than I wanted to spend." So basically, you're telling the shopkeeper, "Still too expensive." It's still too expensive.、Yeah. You still don't want to spend that much.、Mm-hmm. All right, let's take a look at our last phrase. 
That's my last offer. That's my last offer. That's my last offer. Now this could work both ways. It could be the shopkeeper that's telling you that. That's my lowest price. Right. Or you could say, "That's my last offer." That's my highest price. If you are buying it. Right. Because sometimes when you're bargaining, the shopkeeper will say, "All right, what's your best offer? How much will you pay?" Hundred dollars. That's my final offer. Exactly.、Mm-hmm. All right. So we've looked at a lot of great phrases and words, and now you're ready to bargain and also listen to this dialogue for the third time, and then we'll come back and talk some more. Hello. May I help you? Yeah, this dress is really nice. How much is it? That one is one hundred fifty dollars. One hundred and fifty dollars. What about this other one over here? That's one hundred and forty. Um, that's a bit out of my price range. Can you give me a better deal? This is an exclusive design by Damarco. It's a bargain at that price. Well, I don't know. I think I'll shop around. Okay, okay. How about a hundred dollars? That's still more than I wanted to spend. What if I take both dresses? Okay, I can give you a special discount just because you seem like a nice person. A hundred and ninety for both. I don't know. Still a bit pricey. Thanks anyway. Okay, my final price: one hundred dollars for both. That's two for the price of one, and that's my last offer. Great! You got a deal. All right. So I know that in Canada, it's not really common to bargain, right? No, it it really isn't. Like even when you go to the market to buy fruits and vegetables,、uh, it's, it's very very rare to bargain with the mm-hmm. shopkeeper. Mm-hmm. I think one of the most important things when you go shopping is to get a good price. That's right. So we're going to be teaching you how to bargain. So Marco, you just mentioned a really great word.、Um, let's look at it in vocabulary preview. Vocabulary preview. All right. So we're going to preview the word bargain today. Bargain. 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 Now this is an interesting word because it's a verb and a noun. That's right.、Um, so a bargain is a good price, right? Okay, so a bargain is a good price. Yeah, this T-shirt was a bargain.、Um, I only paid a dollar for it. Okay, so that is a bargain. Yes, but to bargain as a verb,、um, to try and get a good price. So it's very similar to negotiate. Yeah, so I would say、uh, it costs a hundred dollars. And then I would say maybe no, I'll give you fifty. Uh, seventy-five. And then I'll say sixty. Et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> <laughs> and that's to bargain, right? Yep. Okay, so we're gonna be bargaining.、Uh, let's listen to the dialogue for the first time as we have a woman bargaining in a store, right? That's right. Hello, may I help you? Yeah, this dress is really nice. How much is it? That one is one hundred fifty dollars. One hundred and fifty dollars. What about this other one over here? That's one hundred and forty. Um, that's a bit out of my price range. Can you give me a better deal? This is an exclusive design by Damarco. It's a bargain at that price. Well, I don't know. I think I'll shop around. Okay, okay. How about a hundred dollars? That's still more than I wanted to spend. What if I take both dresses? Okay, I can give you a special discount just because you seem like a nice person. A hundred and ninety for both. Hmm. I don't know. Still a bit pricey. Thanks anyway. Okay, my final price: one hundred dollars for both. That's two for the price of one, and that's my last offer. Great! You got a deal. All right, that was some good bargaining skills right there. Yeah, and you know what? She used a lot of good language to get、uh, a cheaper price, didn't she? Yeah, yeah, that was good. So let's take a look at this language in language takeaway. Language takeaway. Okay, the first word we have in language takeaway today: price range. Price range. Price range. Price range. Price range. What does that mean exactly? So, price range is、uh, the minimum and the maximum that you're willing to spend for a thing that you want to buy. Exactly. So, in the dialogue, we heard it's out of my price range. It's more than I can spend. More than I could spend. Yep. Okay. Okay. Let's look at our next word. Shop around. Shop around. Shop around. Shop around. 
So she said, "I think I think I'll shop around." Right.、Um, so she wants to check in a few other stores to see if there's a better price. If I shop around, I'm going and trying to compare prices, maybe. Exactly. This is a really good、um, shopping technique. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay, and let's look at her last word, pricey. 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 So something that's pricey is expensive. Expensive. Yep. This is a more sort of informal way of saying expensive. Exactly. So instead of saying, "Wow, that car is really expensive," it's really pricey. It's really pricey. Yeah. Okay. Let's listen to our dialogue for the second time, and it's going to be slowed down a bit. So you'll understand some of these great words a little bit better. Hello. May I help you? Yeah. This dress is really nice. How much is it? That one is one hundred fifty dollars. A hundred and fifty dollars. What about this other one over here? That's one hundred forty. Hmm, that's a bit out of my price range. Can you give me a better deal? This is an exclusive design by Da Marco. It's a bargain at that price. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I think I'll shop around. Okay. Okay. How about one hundred dollars? That's still more than I wanted to spend. What if I take both dresses? Okay, I can give you a special discount just because you seem like a nice person. One hundred ninety dollars for both. I don't know. It's still a bit pricey. Thanks anyway. Okay, my final price: one hundred dollars for both. That's two for the price of one. That's my last offer. Great, you've got a deal. So we've covered the language in this dialogue. Now let's take a look at some of the phrases in putting it together. Putting it together. So Marco, in this dialogue, there's a lot of really useful phrases、um, to help you get a better price when you shop, right? Exactly. So the first one we have is, "Can you give me a better deal?" Can you give me a better deal? Can you give me a better deal? So if I'm shopping and something is too expensive, yeah, I would use this sentence with the shopkeeper. Yeah. So you might say,、um, "Hey, this is out of my price range. Could you give me a better deal?" Can you give me a better deal? Yeah. Okay. We have some examples of "Can you give me a better deal?" Let's listen. Example one. I really like this shirt, but it's too expensive. Can you give me a better deal? Example two. Can you give me a better price on this car? I really don't have that much money. So you can see here that you can say, "Can you give me a better deal?" or "Can you give me a better price?" All right, let's take a look at the next phrase. That's still more than I wanted to spend. That's still more than I wanted to spend. That's still more than I wanted to spend. So if the seller suggests a really high price, you can say, "That's still more than I wanted to spend." So basically, you're telling the shopkeeper, "Still too expensive." It's still too expensive.、Yeah. You still don't want to spend that much.、Mm-hmm. All right, let's take a look at our last phrase. That's my last offer. That's my last offer. That's my last offer. Now this could work both ways. It could be the shopkeeper that's telling you that. That's my lowest price, right? Or you could say, "That's my last offer." That's my highest price if you are buying it, right? Because sometimes when you're bargaining, the shopkeeper will say, "All right, what's your best offer? How much will you pay?" A hundred dollars. That's my final offer. Exactly.、Mm-hmm. All right. So we've looked at a lot of great phrases and words, and now you're ready to bargain and also listen to this dialogue for the third time, and then we'll come back and talk some more. Hello. May I help you? Yeah, this dress is really nice. How much is it? That one is one hundred fifty dollars. One hundred and fifty dollars. What about this other one over here? That's one hundred and forty. Um, that's a bit out of my price range. Can you give me a better deal? This is an exclusive design by Da Marco. It's a bargain at that price. Well, I don't know. I think I'll shop around. Okay, okay. How about one hundred dollars? Still more than I wanted to spend. What if I take both dresses? Okay, I can give you a special discount just because you seem like a nice person. A hundred and ninety for both.、Mm, I don't know. Still a bit pricey. 
Thanks anyway. Okay, my final price, $100 for both. That's two for the price of one, and that's my last offer. Great, you've got a deal. All right, so I know that in Canada, it's not really common to bargain, right? No, it, it really isn't. Like, even when you go to the market to buy fruits and vegetables, uh, it's, it's very, very rare to bargain with the mm -hmm. shopkeeper. Mm -hmm. I think one of the most important things when you go shopping is to get a good price. That's right. So we're going to be teaching you how to bargain. So Marco, you just mentioned a really great word. Um, let's look at it in vocabulary preview. Vocabulary preview. All right. So we're going to preview the word bargain today. Bargain. 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 Now, this is an interesting word because it's a verb and a noun. That's right. Um, so a bargain is a good price, right? Okay, so a bargain is a good price. Yeah, this t-shirt was a bargain. Um, I only paid a dollar for it. Okay, so that is a bargain. Yes. But to bargain as a verb. Um, to try and get a good price. So it's very similar to negotiate. Yeah, so I would say uh, it costs $100. And then I would say maybe, no, I'll give you 50. Uh, 75. And then I'll say 60. Etc. Etc. <laughs> <laughs> and that's to bargain, right? Yep. Okay, so we're going to be bargaining. Uh, let's listen to the dialogue for the first time as we have a woman bargaining in a store, right? That's right. Hello, may I help you? Yeah, this dress is really nice. How much is it? That one is $150. $150? What about this other one over here? That's $140. Um, that's a bit out of my price range. Can you give me a better deal? This is an exclusive design by Damarco. It's a bargain at that price. Well, I don't know. I think I'll shop around. Okay, okay. How about a hundred dollars? That's still more than I wanted to spend. What if I take both dresses? Okay, I can give you a special discount just because you seem like a nice person. A hundred and ninety for both. Mm. I don't know. It's still a bit pricey. Thanks anyway. Okay, my final price, $100 for both. That's two for the price of one, and that's my last offer. Great! You've got a deal. All right, that was some good bargaining skills right there. Yeah, and you know what? She used a lot of good language to get uh, a cheaper price, didn't she? Yeah, yeah, that was good. So let's take a look at this language in Language Takeaway. Language takeaway. Okay, the first word we have in language takeaway today. Price range. Price range. Price range. Price range. Price range. What does that mean exactly? So price range is uh, the minimum and the maximum that you're willing to spend for a thing that you want to buy. Exactly. So in the dialogue we heard, it's out of my price range. It's more than I can spend. More than I could spend. Yep. Okay. Okay, let's look at our next word. Shop around. Shop around. Shop around. Shop around. So she said, I think, I think I'll shop around. Right. Um, so she wants to check in a few other stores to see if there's a better price. If I shop around, I'm going and trying to compare prices, maybe. Exactly. This is a really good um, shopping technique. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. And let's look at our last word. Pricey. 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 So something that's pricey is... Expensive. Expensive. Yep. This is a more sort of informal way of saying expensive. Exactly. So instead of saying, wow, that car is really expensive. It's really pricey. It's really pricey. Yeah. Okay, let's listen to our dialogue for the second time, and it's going to be slowed down a bit. So you'll understand some of these great words a little bit better. Hello, may I help you? Yeah, this dress is really nice. How much is it? That one is $150. $150? What about this other one over here? That's $140. Hmm, that's a bit out of my price range. Can you give me a better deal? This is an exclusive design by Da Marco. It's a bargain at that price. Mm, well, I don't know. I think I'll shop around. Okay, okay. How about $100? That's still more than I wanted to spend. What if I take both dresses? Okay. I can give you a special discount just because you seem like a nice person. 
one hundred ninety dollars for both. I don't know. It's still a bit pricey. Thanks anyway. Okay, my final price: one hundred dollars for both. That's two for the price of one. That's my last offer. Great, you've got a deal. So we've covered the language in this dialogue. Now let's take a look at some of the phrases in putting it together. Putting it together. So Marco, in this dialogue, there's a lot of really useful phrases、um, to help you get a better price when you shop, right? Exactly. So the first one we have is, "Can you give me a better deal?" Can you give me a better deal? Can you give me a better deal? So if I'm shopping and something is too expensive, yeah, I would use this sentence with the shopkeeper. Yeah. So you might say.、Um, Hey, this is out of my price range. Could you give me a better deal? Can you give me a better deal? Yeah. Okay. We have some examples of "Can you give me a better deal?" Let's listen. Example one. I really like this shirt, but it's too expensive. Can you give me a better deal? Example two. Can you give me a better price on this car? I really don't have that much money. So you can see here that you can say, "Can you give me a better deal?" or "Can you give me a better price?" All right, let's take a look at the next phrase. That's still more than I wanted to spend. That's still more than I wanted to spend. That's still more than I wanted to spend. So if the seller suggests a really high price, you can say, "That's still more than I wanted to spend." So basically, you're telling the shopkeeper, "Still too expensive." It's still too expensive.、Yeah. You still don't want to spend that much.、Mm-hmm. All right. Let's take a look at our last phrase. That's my last offer. That's my last offer. That's my last offer. Now this could work both ways. It could be the shopkeeper that's telling you that. That's my lowest price. Right. Or you could say, "That's my last offer." That's my highest price. If you are buying it. Right. Because sometimes when you're bargaining, the shopkeeper will say, "All right, what's your best offer? How much will you pay?" Hundred dollars. That's my final offer. Exactly.、Mm-hmm. All right. So we've looked at a lot of great phrases and words, and now you're ready to bargain and also listen to this dialogue for the third time, and then we'll come back and talk some more. Hello. May I help you? Yeah. This dress is really nice. How much is it? That one is one hundred fifty dollars. One hundred and fifty dollars. What about this other one over here? That's one hundred and forty. Um, that's a bit out of my price range. Can you give me a better deal? This is an exclusive design by Damarco. It's a bargain at that price. Well, I don't know. I think I'll shop around. Okay, okay. How about a hundred dollars? That's still more than I wanted to spend. What if I take both dresses? Okay, I can give you a special discount just because you seem like a nice person. A hundred and ninety for both. Hmm. I don't know.、It's、still a bit pricey. Thanks anyway. Okay, my final price: one hundred dollars for both. That's two for the price of one, and that's my last offer. Great! You got a deal. All right. So I know that in Canada, it's not really common to bargain, right? No, it it really isn't. Like even when you go to the market to buy fruits and vegetables,、uh, it's, it's very very rare to bargain with the mm-hmm. shopkeeper. Mm-hmm. 이번 영상은 How to order pizza? 이 관한 내용으로 영어 말하기 듣기 연습을 해보겠습니다. 그럼 바로 시작할게요. And we're going to be teaching you how to order pizza. Yeah, you know, pizza is one of my favorite foods and the favorite food of many people. Exactly, it's one of those common foods that you're at home and you want to order something to、yeah. eat, and the typical、yeah. thing is pizza. Yeah. But you know, there's some very special language that you've got to use. You got to know this language、uh, when you want to order a pizza. Exactly. So let's listen to this dialogue for the first time as a man is ordering pizza. Uh, good evening, Pizza House. This is Marty speaking. May I take your order? Um. Yes, I'd like a medium pizza with pepperoni, olives, and extra cheese. We have a two-for-one special on large pizzas. Would you like a large pizza instead? Sure, that sounds good. Great. 
Would you like your second pizza to be the same size as the first? No, uh, make the second one with ham, pineapple, and green peppers. Oh, and make it thin crust. Okay, thin crust. Your total is twenty-one fifty, and your order will arrive in thirty minutes, or it's free. Perfect. Uh, thank you. Bye. Sir, wait. I need your address. Okay, so I guess he's not getting his pizza. No, he forgot <laughs> to give his address. That's yep. a bit of a problem. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's take a look at some of the vocabulary in language takeaway. Language takeaway. All right, we've got some great pizza words for you today,、um, and the first one we have is a medium pizza. Medium pizza. Medium pizza. So that's the size, right? Yeah. Medium. You can say medium or twelve inch. Twelve inch. Usually,、yeah. a medium pizza is twelve inches. Yeah. So you could say, "I'd like a twelve inch pizza." Okay. For those of us who use centimeters, this would be more or less thirty centimeters. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's take a look at the next size: a large pizza. Large pizza. A large pizza. So it might also be called an eighteen-inch. An eighteen-inch pizza.、Mm -hmm. Or isn't it sometimes called a family size? Maybe. Family size.、Uh, I guess it depends where you're ordering. Yeah. Okay. So large and medium pizzas. Now let's take a look at some of the ingredients. Yes. Okay, we have pepperoni. 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 This is the common ingredient in all pizza. It's my favorite.、Um, a pizza is not a pizza unless it has pepperoni. <laughs> okay, so pepperoni is like is a sausage, right? Yeah, it's a little bit spicy. A little bit spicy, and they、yeah. look like a like circles. Red circles. Yep. Okay, olives. 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 Olives are little black or green balls. Yes, little green or black balls. You you can also find them in a martini. Yeah, exactly. Yep. It's very common to have an olive in a martini. Yes. Okay, and he also ordered extra cheese. Extra cheese. So that means more cheese.、Mm -hmm. Extra. All right, another ingredient: ham. 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 The meat of a pig. Yeah, ham. Yep. Okay, and he also ordered another strange ingredient for a pizza: pineapple. 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 Now this is a fruit. I know, so weird to put <laughs> pineapple on a pizza. Many people like pineapple on a on their pizza. It's a tropical fruit. Yep, comes from Hawaii. Usually,、mm -hmm. and it kind of looks like a little palm tree at the yeah, top. Yeah, like yeah, the top of a pineapple looks like a tree. Mm-hmm. So pineapple. Yep. All right. Now the last description of a pizza. He ordered it with thin crust. Thin crust. Thin crust. Thin crust. Now we know thin is some skinny. Skinny. But crust. What is crust? It's the bread part of the pizza. The outside part. Yep. Okay, so that's the crust. That's my favorite part of the. Really?、Pizza. Yeah.、Mm. Thin crust or thick crust?、Uh, thin crust. Yeah. Thin crust, and I just—I really love that bread part. It's so important <laughs> to a good pizza. <laughs> okay, well, you know they also have—they、um, also have the crust filled with cheese. No, it's so wrong. That's good too. No. <laughs> All right, let's listen to our dialogue again, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more. Good evening, Pizza House. This is Marty speaking. May I take your order? Um. Yes, I'd like a medium pizza with pepperoni, olives, and extra cheese. We have a two-for-one special on large pizzas. Would you like a large pizza instead? Sure, that sounds good. Great. Would you like your second pizza to be the same as the first? No, make the second one with ham, pineapple, and green peppers. Oh, and make it thin crust. Okay, thin crust. Your total is twenty one fifty, and your order will arrive in thirty minutes, or it's free. Perfect. Thank you. Bye, sir. Wait, I need your address. Okay, now we have some really polite language that you could use, possibly with customers or with clients. Yep. Okay, so let's take a look at them in Fluency Builder. Fluency Builder. Okay, my all right. The first phrase we have,、um, I think, is my favorite.、Uh, this is the way that Marty answered the phone, right?、Mm -hmm. He said, "This is Marty speaking." This is Marty speaking. This is Marty speaking. Now, why is this so important? Because a lot of people, when they answer the phone, say, "I'm Erica," 
Like, mm-hmm. hello, I'm Erica,、mm-hmm. which is not what English people say.、Mm-hmm. We always say, Erica speaking.、Mm-hmm. This、yep. is Erica speaking. Exactly. So, guys, remember this. You'll sound really, really great when you use this on the phone. This is Marty speaking. Exactly. This is Marty. Well, don't use Marty, use your name. <laughs> <Yeah> . All right. Then you also mentioned a two for one special. Two for one special. A two for one special. So that means you're getting two pizzas, right? For the price of one.、Mm-hmm. And a special is just a special promotion, a special price. Special price. Yes. Two for one special. All right. All right. Now, a very easy phrase.、Mm-hmm. Would you like? Would you like? Would you like? Would you like? Now, this is a great way to offer something. It's a more polite way of asking, do you want? Do you want?、Mm-hmm. Do you want is, is okay. Yeah, it's fine. But I, it's less polite than would you like. Exactly. So, whenever you offer something, would you like a cup of coffee? Would you like to sit down? Okay. Yep. So, would you like? Let's listen to our dialogue for the last time. Uh, good evening, Pizza House. This is Marty speaking. May I take your order? Um, yes. I'd like a medium pizza with pepperoni, olives, and extra cheese. We have a two for one special on large pizzas. Would you like a large pizza instead? Sure, that sounds good. Great. Would you like your second pizza to be the same size as the first? No,、uh, make the second one with ham, pineapple, and green peppers. Oh, and make it thin crust. Okay, thin crust. Your total is $21.50 and your order will arrive in 30 minutes or it's free. Perfect.、Uh, thank you. Bye. Sir, wait, I need your address. And we're going to be teaching you how to order pizza. Yeah, you know, pizza is one of my favorite foods and the favorite food of many people. Exactly. It's one of those common foods that you're at home and you want to order something to、yep. eat. And the typical、yeah. thing is pizza. Yeah. But you know, there's some very special language that you've got to use. You've got to know this language、uh, when you want to order a pizza. Exactly. So let's listen to this dialogue for the first time as a man is ordering pizza. Pizza House, this is Marty speaking. May I take your order? Um, yes. I'd like a medium pizza with pepperoni, olives, and extra cheese. We have a two for one special on large pizzas. Would you like a large pizza instead? Sure, that sounds good. Great. Would you like your second pizza to be the same size as the first? No,、uh, make the second one with ham, pineapple, and green peppers. Oh, and make it thin crust. Okay, thin crust. Your total is $21.50 and your order will arrive in 30 minutes or it's free. Perfect.、Uh, thank you. Bye. Sir, wait, I need your address. Okay, so I guess he's not getting his pizza. No, he forgot <laughs> to give his address. That's、yep. a bit of a problem.、Mm-hmm. Okay, let's take a look at some of the vocabulary in language takeaway. Language takeaway. All right, we've got some great pizza words for you today.、Um, and the first one we have is a medium pizza. Medium pizza. Medium pizza. So that's the size, right? Yeah. Medium. You can say medium or 12 inch. 12 inch. Usually、yeah. a medium pizza is 12 inches. Yeah, so you could say, I'd like a 12 inch pizza. Okay. For those of us who use centimeters, this would be more or less 30 centimeters. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the next size a large pizza. Large pizza. A large pizza. So it might also be called an 18 inch. An 18 inch pizza.、Mm-hmm. Or isn't it sometimes called a family size? Maybe. Family size.、Uh, I guess it depends where you're ordering. Yeah. Okay, so large and medium pizzas. Now let's take a look at some of the ingredients. Yes. Okay, we have pepperoni. 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 This is the common ingredient in all pizza. It's my favorite.、Um, a pizza is not a pizza unless it has pepperoni. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so pepperoni is, la- is a sausage, right? Yeah, it's a little bit spicy. A little bit spicy. And they、yeah. look like a. Like circles. Red circles. Yep. Okay. Olives. 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 
Olives are little black or green balls. Yes, little green or black balls. You you can also find them in a martini. Yeah, exactly. Yep. It's very common to have an olive in a martini. Yes. Okay, and he also ordered extra cheese. Extra cheese. So that means more cheese.、Mm-hmm. Extra. All right, another ingredient: ham. 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 The meat of a pig. Yeah, ham. Yep. Okay, and he also ordered another strange ingredient for a pizza: pineapple. 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 Now this is a fruit. I know, so weird to put <laughs> pineapple on a pizza. Many people like pineapple on a on their pizza. It's a tropical fruit. Yep, comes from Hawaii. Usually,、mm-hmm. and it kind of looks like a little palm tree at the yeah, top. Yeah, like yeah, the top of a pineapple looks like a tree.、Mm-hmm. So pineapple. Yep. All right. Now the last description of a pizza. He ordered it with thin crust. Thin crust. Thin crust. Thin crust. Now we know thin is some skinny. Skinny. But crust. What is crust? It's the bread part of the pizza. The outside part. Yep. Okay, so that's the crust. That's my favorite part of the. Really?、Pizza. Yeah.、Mm. Thin crust or thick crust?、Uh, thin crust. Yeah, thin crust, and I just I really love that bread part. It's so important <laughs> to a good pizza. <laughs> okay. Well, you know they also have、um, they also have the crust filled with cheese. No, it's so wrong. That's good too. No. <laughs> All right, let's listen to our dialogue again, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more. Good evening, Pizza House. This is Marty speaking. May I take your order? Um, yes, I'd like a medium pizza with pepperoni, olives, and extra cheese. We have a two-for-one special on large pizzas. Would you like a large pizza instead? Sure, that sounds good. Great. Would you like your second pizza to be the same as the first? No, make the second one with ham, pineapple, and green peppers. Oh, and make it thin crust. Okay, thin crust. Your total is twenty-one fifty, and your order will arrive in thirty minutes, or it's free. Perfect. Thank you. Bye. Sir, wait. I need your address. Okay, now we have some really polite language that you could use, possibly with customers or with clients. Yep. Okay, so let's take a look at them in Fluency Builder. Fluency Builder. Okay, my all right. The first phrase we have,、um, I think, is my favorite.、Uh, this is the way that Marty answered the phone. Right.、Mm-hmm. He said, "This is Marty speaking." This is Marty speaking. This is Marty speaking. Now, why is this so important? Because a lot of people, when they answer the phone, say, "I'm Erica." Like,、mm-hmm. "Hello, I'm Erica,"、mm-hmm. which is not what English people say.、Mm-hmm. We always say, "Erica speaking."、Mm-hmm. This、yep. is Erica speaking. Exactly. So, guys, remember this. You'll sound really, really great when you use this on the phone. This is Marty speaking. Exactly. This is Marty. Well, don't use Marty. Use your name. <laughs> <Yeah> . All <laughs> right. Then you also mentioned a two-for-one special. Two for one special. A two for one special. So that means you're getting two pizzas, right? For the price of one.、Mm-hmm. And a special is just a special promotion. A special price. A special price. Yes. Two for one special. All right. All right. Now a very easy phrase.、Mm-hmm. Would you like? Would you like? Would you like? Would you like? Now this is a great way to offer something. It's a more polite way of asking. Do you want? Do you want?、Mm-hmm. Do you want is is okay. Yeah, it's fine. But I, it's less polite than would you like. Exactly. So, whenever you offer something, would you like a cup of coffee? Would you like to sit down? Okay. Yep. So, would you like? Let's listen to our dialogue for the last time. Uh, good evening. Pizza House. This is Marty speaking. May I take your order? Um, yes. I'd like a medium pizza with pepperoni, olives, and extra cheese. We have a two-for-one special on large pizzas. Would you like a large pizza instead? Sure, that sounds good. Great. Would you like your second pizza to be the same size as the first? No.、Uh, make the second one with ham, pineapple, and green peppers. Oh, and make it thin crust. Okay, thin crust. Your total is twenty one fifty, and your order will arrive in thirty minutes, or it's free. Perfect.、Uh, thank you. Bye. Sir, wait. I need your address. 
And we're going to be teaching you how to order pizza. Yeah, you know, pizza is one of my favorite foods and the favorite food of many people. Exactly. It's one of those common foods that you're at home and you want to order something to、yeah. eat. And the typical、yeah. thing is pizza. Yeah. But you know, there's some very special language that you've got to use. You've got to know this language、uh, when you want to order a pizza. Exactly. So let's listen to this dialogue for the first time as a man is ordering pizza. Uh, good evening, Pizza House. This is Marty speaking. May I take your order? Um, yes. I'd like a medium pizza with pepperoni, olives, and extra cheese. We have a two for one special on large pizzas. Would you like a large pizza instead? Sure, that sounds good. Great! Would you like your second pizza to be the same size as the first? No,、uh, make the second one with ham, pineapple, and green peppers. Oh, and make it thin crust. Okay, thin crust. Your total is $21.50, and your order will arrive in 30 minutes or it's free. Perfect.、Uh, thank you. Bye. Sir, wait, I need your address! Okay, so I guess he's not getting his pizza. No, he forgot <laughs> to give his address. That's、yep. a bit of a problem.、Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take a look at some of the vocabulary in language takeaway. Language takeaway. All right, we've got some great pizza words for you today.、Um, and the first one we have is a medium pizza. Medium pizza. Medium pizza. So that's the size, right? Yeah. Medium. You can say medium or. 12 inch. 12 inch. Usually、yeah. a medium pizza is 12 inches. Yeah, so you could say. I'd like a 12 inch pizza. Okay. For those of us who use centimeters, this would be more or less 30 centimeters. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the next size a large pizza. Large pizza. A large pizza. So it might also be called an 18 inch. An 18 inch pizza.、Mm -hmm. Or isn't it sometimes called a family size? Maybe. Family size.、Uh, I guess it depends where you're ordering. Yeah. Okay, so large and medium pizzas. Now let's take a look at some of the ingredients. Yes. Okay, we have pepperoni. 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 This is the common ingredient in all pizza. It's my favorite.、Um, a pizza is not a pizza unless it has pepperoni. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so pepperoni is, like, is a sausage, right? Yeah, it's a little bit spicy. A little bit spicy. And they、yeah. look like a. Like circles. Red circles. Yep. Okay. Olives. 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 Olives are little black or green balls. Yes, little green or black balls. You, you can also find them in a martini. Yeah, exactly.、Yep. It's very common to have an olive in a martini. Yes. Okay, and he also ordered extra cheese. Extra cheese. So that means more cheese.、Mm -hmm. Extra. All right, another ingredient ham. 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 The meat of a pig. Yeah, ham. Yep. Okay, and he also ordered another strange ingredient for a pizza pineapple. 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 Now, this is a fruit. I know, so weird to put <laughs> pineapple on a pizza. Many people like pineapple on, a, on their pizza. It's a tropical fruit. Yep, comes from Hawaii. Usually.、Mm -hmm. And it kind of looks like a little palm tree at the yeah, top. Yeah, like, yeah, the top of a pineapple looks like a tree. Mm hmm. So, pineapple. Yep. All right. Now, the last description of a pizza. He ordered it with thin crust. Thin crust. Thin crust. Thin crust. Now, we know thin is some skinny. skinny, but crust, what is crust? It's the bread part of the pizza. The outside part. Yep. Okay, so that's the crust. That's my favorite part of the really? pizza. Really? Yeah.、Mm. Thin crust or thick crust?、Uh, thin crust. Yeah. Thin crust, and I just I really love that bread part. It's so important <laughs> to a good pizza. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, they also, have,、um, they also have the crust filled with cheese. No, it's so wrong. That's good, too. No. <laughs> All right. Let's listen to our dialogue again, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more. Good evening, Pizza House. This is Marty speaking. May I take your order? Um, yes. I'd like a medium pizza with pepperoni, olives, and extra cheese. We have a two for one special on large pizzas. Would you like a large pizza instead? Sure, that sounds good. Great. 
Would you like your second pizza to be the same as the first? No, make the second one with ham, pineapple, and green peppers. Oh, and make it thin crust. Okay, thin crust. Your total is twenty-one fifty, and your order will arrive in thirty minutes, or it's free. Perfect. Thank you. Bye, sir. Wait, I need your address. Okay, now we have some really polite language that you could use, possibly with customers or with clients. Yep. Okay, so let's take a look at them in Fluency Builder. Fluency Builder. Okay, my all right. The first phrase we have,、um, I think, is my favorite.、Uh, this is the way that Marty answered the phone. Right?、Mm-hmm. He said, "This is Marty speaking." This is Marty speaking. This is Marty speaking. Now, why is this so important? Because a lot of people, when they answer the phone, say, "I'm Erica." Like,、mm-hmm. "Hello, I'm Erica,"、mm-hmm. which is not what English people say.、Mm-hmm. We always say, "Erica speaking."、Mm-hmm. This、yep. is Erica speaking. Exactly. So, guys, remember this. You'll sound really, really great when you use this on the phone. This is Marty speaking. Exactly. This is Marty. Well, don't use Marty. Use your name. <laughs> <Yeah> . <laughs> All right. Then you also mentioned a two for one special. Two for one special. A two for one special. So that means you're getting two pizzas, right? For the price of one.、Mm-hmm. And a special is just a special promotion. A special price. A special price. Yes. Two for one special. All right. All right. Now a very easy phrase.、Mm-hmm. Would you like? Would you like? Would you like? Would you like? Now this is a great way to offer something. It's a more polite way of asking. Do you want? Do you want?、Mm-hmm. Do you want is is okay. Yeah, it's fine. But I, it's less polite than would you like. Exactly. So, whenever you offer something, would you like a cup of coffee? Would you like to sit down? Okay. Yep. So, would you like? Let's listen to our dialogue for the last time. Uh, good evening. Pizza House. This is Marty speaking. May I take your order? Um. Yes. I'd like a medium pizza with pepperoni, olives, and extra cheese. We have a two-for-one special on large pizzas. Would you like a large pizza instead? Sure. That sounds good. Great. Would you like your second pizza to be the same size as the first? No.、Uh, make the second one with ham, pineapple, and green peppers. Oh, and make it thin crust. Okay, thin crust. Your total is twenty one fifty, and your order will arrive in thirty minutes, or it's free. Perfect.、Uh, thank you. Bye. Sir, wait. I need your address. And we're gonna be teaching you how to order pizza. Yeah, you know, pizza is one of my favorite foods, and the favorite food of many people. Exactly. It's one of those common foods that you're at home and you want to order something to、yeah. eat. And the typical、yeah. thing is pizza. Yeah, but you know, there's some very special language that you've got to use. You got to know this language、uh, when you want to order a pizza. Exactly. So let's listen to this dialogue for the first time as a man is ordering pizza. Uh, good evening. Pizza House. This is Marty speaking. May I take your order? Um. Yes. I'd like a medium pizza with pepperoni, olives, and extra cheese. We have a two-for-one special on large pizzas. Would you like a large pizza instead? Sure. That sounds good. Great. Would you like your second pizza to be the same size as the first? No.、Uh, make the second one with ham, pineapple, and green peppers. Oh, and make it thin crust. Okay, thin crust. Your total is twenty one fifty, and your order will arrive in thirty minutes, or it's free. Perfect.、Uh, thank you. Bye. Sir, wait. I need your address. Okay, so I guess he's not getting his pizza. No, he forgot <laughs> to give his address. That's、yep. a bit of a problem.、Mm-hmm. Okay, let's take a look at some of the vocabulary in language takeaway. Language takeaway. All right, we've got some great pizza words for you today,、um, and the first one we have is a medium pizza. Medium pizza. Medium pizza. So that's the size, right? Yeah. Medium. You can say medium or twelve inch. Twelve inch. Usually,、yeah. a medium pizza is twelve inches. Yeah. So you could say, "I'd like a twelve inch pizza." Okay. 
For those of us who use centimeters, this would be more or less 30 centimeters. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at it. the next size, a large pizza. Large pizza. A large pizza. So it might also be called an 18-inch. An 18-inch pizza. Mm -hmm. Or isn't it sometimes called a family size? Maybe. Family size. Uh, I guess it depends where you're ordering. Yeah. Okay, so large and medium pizzas. Now let's take a look at some of the ingredients. Yes. Okay, we have pepperoni. 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 This is the common ingredient in all pizza. It's my favorite. Um, a pizza is not a pizza unless it has pepperoni. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so pepperoni is la is a sausage, right? Yeah, it's a little bit spicy. A little bit spicy. And they yeah. look like... A like circles. Red circles. Yep. Okay. Olives. 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 Olives are little black or green balls. Yes, little green or black balls. You you can also find them in a martini. Yeah, exactly. Yep. It's very common to have an olive in a martini. Yes. Okay, and he also ordered extra cheese. Extra cheese. So that means more cheese. Mm -hmm. Extra. All right, another ingredient. Ham. 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 The meat of a pig. Yeah, ham. Yep. Okay, and he also ordered another strange ingredient for a pizza, pineapple. 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 Now, this is a fruit. I know. So weird to put <laughs> pineapple on a pizza. Many people like pineapple on a, on their pizza. It's a tropical fruit. Yep. Comes from Hawaii. Usually. Mm -hmm. And it kind of looks like a little palm tree at the yeah, top. Yeah, like, yeah, the top of a pineapple looks like a tree. Mm-hmm. So, pineapple. Yep. All right. Now, the last description of a pizza. He ordered it with thin crust. Thin crust. Thin crust. Thin crust. Now, we know thin is some skinny. skinny. But crust, what is crust? It's the bread part of the pizza. The outside part. Yep. Okay, so that's the crust. That's my favorite part of the really? pizza. Really? Yeah. Mm. Thin crust or thick crust? Uh, thin crust. Yeah. Thin crust, and I just, I really love that bread part. It's so important <laughs> to a good pizza. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, they also have, um, they also have the crust filled with cheese. No, it's so wrong. That's good, too. No. <laughs> All right. Let's listen to our dialogue again, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more. Good evening, Pizza House. This is Marty speaking. May I take your order? Um, yes. I'd like a medium pizza with pepperoni, olives, and extra cheese. We have a two-for-one special on large pizzas. Would you like a large pizza instead? Sure, that sounds good. Great. Would you like your second pizza to be the same as the first? No, make the second one with ham, pineapple, and green peppers. Oh, and make it thin crust. Okay, thin crust. Your total is twenty-one fifty, and your order will arrive in thirty minutes, or it's free. Perfect. Thank you. Bye, sir. Wait, I need your address. Okay, now we have some really polite language that you could use, possibly with customers or with clients. Yep. Okay, so let's take a look at them in Fluency Builder. Fluency Builder. Okay, my, all right, the first phrase we have, um, I think is my favorite. Uh, this is the way that Marty answered the phone, right? Mm -hmm. He said, this is Marty speaking. This is Marty speaking. This is Marty speaking. Now, why is this so important? Because a lot of people, when they answer the phone, say, I'm Erica. Like, mm -hmm. hello, I'm Erica, mm -hmm. which is not what English people say. Mm -hmm. We always say, Erica speaking. Mm -hmm. This yep. is Erica speaking. Exactly. So guys, remember this. You'll sound really, really great when you use this on the phone. This is Marty speaking. Exactly. This is Marty. Well, don't use Marty. Use your name. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Then you also mentioned a two-for-one special. Two-for-one special. A two-for-one special. So that means you're getting two... Pizzas, right? For the price of one. Mm-hmm. And a special is just a special promotion. A special price. Special price. Yes. Two for one special. All right. All right. Now a very easy phrase. Mm -hmm. Would you like? Would you like? Would you like? Would you like? Now this is a great way to offer something. It's a more polite way of asking, do you want? Do you want? Mm -hmm. Do you want is, is okay. Yeah, it's fine. But I, it's less polite than would you like. Exactly. So... 
Whenever you offer something, would you like a cup of coffee? Would you like to sit down? Okay. Yep. So, would you like? Let's listen to our dialogue for the last time. Uh, good evening, Pizza House. This is Marty speaking. May I take your order? Um, yes. I'd like a medium pizza with pepperoni, olives, and extra cheese. We have a two-for-one special on large pizzas. Would you like a large pizza instead? Sure, that sounds good. Great. Would you like your second pizza to be the same size as the first? No, uh, make the second one with ham, pineapple, and green peppers. Oh, and make it thin crust. Okay, thin crust. Your total is twenty-one fifty, and your order will arrive in thirty minutes, or it's free. Perfect. Uh, thank you. Bye. Sir, wait. I need your address. And we're gonna be teaching you how to order pizza. Yeah, you know, pizza is one of my favorite foods, and the favorite food of many people. Exactly, it's one of those common foods that you're at home and you want to order something to、yep. eat. And the typical、yeah. thing is pizza. Yeah, but you know, there's some very special language that you've got to use. You got to know this language、uh, when you want to order a pizza. Exactly. So let's listen to this dialogue for the first time as a man is ordering pizza. Uh, good evening. Pizza House. This is Marty speaking. May I take your order? Um, yes. I'd like a medium pizza with pepperoni, olives, and extra cheese. We have a two-for-one special on large pizzas. Would you like a large pizza instead? Sure, that sounds good. Great. Would you like your second pizza to be the same size as the first? No.、Uh, make the second one with ham, pineapple, and green peppers. Oh, and make it thin crust. Okay, thin crust. Your total is twenty-one fifty, and your order will arrive in thirty minutes, or it's free. Perfect.、Uh, thank you. Bye. Sir, wait. I need your address. Okay, so I guess he's not getting his pizza. No, he forgot <laughs> to give his address. That's、yep. a bit of a problem.、Mm-hmm. Okay, let's take a look at some of the vocabulary in language takeaway. Language takeaway. All right, we've got some great pizza words for you today,、um, and the first one we have is a medium pizza. Medium pizza. Medium pizza. So that's the size, right? Yeah. Medium. You can say medium or twelve inch. Twelve inch. Usually,、yeah. a medium pizza is twelve inches. Yeah. So you could say, "I'd like a twelve inch pizza." Okay. For those of us who use centimeters, this would be more or less thirty centimeters. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the next size: a large pizza. Large pizza. A large pizza. So it might also be called an 18-inch. An 18-inch pizza,、mm-hmm. or isn't it sometimes called a family size? Maybe. Family size.、Uh, I guess it depends where you're ordering. Yeah. Okay, so large and medium pizzas. Now let's take a look at some of the ingredients. Yes. Okay, we have pepperoni. 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 This is the common ingredient in all pizza. It's my favorite.、Um, a pizza is not a pizza unless it has pepperoni. <laughs> okay, so pepperoni is la- is a sausage, right? Yeah, it's a little bit spicy. A little bit spicy, and they、yeah. look like a like circles, red circles. Yep. Okay, olives. 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 Olives are little black or green balls. Yes, little green or black balls. You you can also find them in a martini. Yeah, exactly. Yep. It's very common to have an olive in a martini. Yes. Okay, and he also ordered extra cheese. Extra cheese. So that means more cheese. Mhm. Extra. All right. Another ingredient: ham. 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 The meat of a pig. Yeah, ham. Yep. Okay, and he also ordered another strange ingredient for a pizza: pineapple. 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 Now this is a fruit. I know, so weird to put <laughs> pineapple on a pizza. Many people like pineapple on a on their pizza. It's a tropical fruit. Yep, comes from Hawaii. Usually,、mm-hmm. and it kind of looks like a little palm tree at the yeah, top. Yeah, like yeah, the top of a pineapple looks like a tree. Mm-hmm. So pineapple. Yep. All right. Now the last description of a pizza. He ordered it with thin crust. Thin crust. Thin crust. Thin crust. Now we know thin is some skinny. Skinny. But crust. What is crust? It's the bread part of the pizza. 
the outside part. Yep. Okay, so that's the crust. That's my favorite part of the really? pizza. Really? Yeah. Mm. Thin crust or thick crust? Uh, thin crust. Yeah, thin crust. And I just, I really love that bread part. It's so <laughs> important to a good pizza. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, they also have, um, they also have the crust filled with cheese. No, it's so wrong. That's good too. No. <laughs> All right, let's listen to our dialogue again, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more. Good evening, Pizza House. This is Marty speaking. May I take your order? Um, yes, I'd like a medium pizza with pepperoni, olives, and extra cheese. We have a two-for-one special on large pizzas. Would you like a large pizza instead? Sure, that sounds good. Great! Would you like your second pizza to be the same as the first? No, make the second one with ham, pineapple, and green peppers. Oh, and make it thin crust. Okay, thin crust. Your total is $21.50 and your order will arrive in 30 minutes or it's free. Perfect. Thank you. Bye. Sir! Wait! I need your address! Okay, now we have some really polite language that you could use possibly with customers or with clients. Yep. Okay, so let's take a look at them in Fluency Builder. Fluency Builder. Okay, my... All right, the first phrase we have, um, I think is my favorite. Uh, this is the way that Marty answered the phone, right? Mm -hmm. He said, this is Marty speaking. This is Marty speaking. This is Marty speaking. Now, why is this so important? Because a lot of people, when they answer the phone, say, I'm Erica. Mm -hmm. Like, hello, I'm Erica. Mm -hmm. Which is not what English people say. Mm -hmm. We always say, Erica speaking. Mm -hmm. This yep. is Erica speaking. Exactly. So guys, remember this. You'll sound really, really great when you use this on the phone. This is Marty speaking. Exactly. This is Marty. Well, don't use Marty. Use your name. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Then you also mentioned a two-for-one special. Two for one special. A two for one special. So that means you're getting two pizzas, right? For the price of one. Mm -hmm. And a special is just a special promotion. A special price. A special price. Yes. Two for one special. All right. All right. Now a very easy phrase. Mm -hmm. Would you like? Would you like? Would you like? Would you like? Now this is a great way to offer something. It's a more polite way of asking. Do you want? Do you want? Mm -hmm. Do you want is, is okay. Yeah, it's fine. But I, it's less polite than would you like. Exactly. So whenever you offer something, would you like a cup of coffee? Would you like to sit down? Okay. Yep. So would you like? Let's listen to our dialogue for the last time. Uh, good evening. Pizza House, this is Marty speaking. May I take your order? Um, yes. I'd like a medium pizza with pepperoni, olives, and extra cheese. We have a two-for-one special on large pizzas. Would you like a large pizza instead? Sure, that sounds good. Great! Would you like your second pizza to be the same size as the first? No, uh, make the second one with ham, pineapple, and green peppers. Oh, and make it thin crust. Okay, thin crust. Your total is twenty-one fifty, and your order will arrive in thirty minutes, or it's free. Perfect. Uh, thank you. Bye. Sir, wait. I need your address. <laughs> <laughs>